to the ACC Huddle Memorial Bell Tower, hoping to see that thing lit up later on. What back on a five-game win streak playing in North Carolina in prime time tonight, the ACC Huddle. Look at that graphic. Coming to you live all day long. We've got rivalry games throughout the day. So you know what happens. 9.30 a.m., they are already out here with the fire, tailgating, getting ready for this 8 o'clock game tonight ahead of the 113th meeting between North Carolina and NC State. A sold-out crowd tonight. Over 56,000 going to pack this place. And you see we're at the top of it all here at Carter-Finley Stadium. As we say hello, good morning, happy Thanksgiving weekend. And welcome into the ACC huddle. Eddie Royal, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, Coach Mark Richt going to join us later. But Coach Dave Doran joining us here now to start no, the day. And Coach, we appreciate the time this morning it's a big one tonight I know a rivalry game always means a little bit more what have you told your guys ahead of, of this one uh, I've said a lot of things to them ahead of this one. <laughs> that uh, you can tell us right now yeah right. it's a lot but you know it's first of all it's senior night and so for the 13 seniors that can't play again in Carter Finley it's about them and the brotherhood that goes into playing for them um, yeah it is a rivalry game and, and it's going to be a packed crazy house in here it's going to be fun but for us, it's about winning this game for the seniors. Coach, I've always been told you leave something better than the way you found it. Peyton Wilson, yeah. how's he going to leave this place better than he found it outside of what we see on the football field? He's a generational player. Like, you know, you don't see guys play like him very often at his position. Uh, the way that he's led the locker room as well, not just the defense, but the locker room. And what he stands for, you know, just as a human being, the way that he treats people off the field, his legacy will be felt here for a long time. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Coach. And it's been a privilege for us. I remember when he was just a young kid, you told us, watch out for 11. Yeah. And now to see where he is at this point, I hope will be Defensive Player of the Year. I think it should already be locked up. And then national awards. That guy deserves that type of thing. But I, I want to focus more on your team uh, because there was a moment in time where a lot of people, probably us included at one point, kind of left you for dead there with, with the way that you were playing. Couldn't really get a lot going. This team has flipped it around like crazy. And you guys are staring down a 10-win season, you know, the, the second or third, however you look at it, in, in program history. What does this team mean to you and what they've overcome? Well, I'm proud of them. You know, I think we were at a, at a low point. Sometimes you got to hit the bottom and really assess who you are, what, what you're doing. Um, it's easy to lie to yourself sometimes, you know, and I think as a team, that Duke loss was what we needed. We needed that. And uh, true serum, I think, you know, and the guys came together. We put together a really good plan on how to evolve as a team. I said, let's forget the first part of this thing. We got five left and let's go one at a time, see if we can be five and oh at the end of this five week window. And we're sitting here four and oh with our rivalry left. And so proud of everybody uh, for stepping up. We knew there was people doubting us. There's a lot. And to me, one of my favorite things in the world to do is prove those people wrong, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and so the last four weeks have been very gratifying and I want to finish this thing. Okay. Yeah, well, you could tell your team, you know, reverberates that thought to prove people wrong. Yeah. Uh, but going up against this Tar Heel offense, Drake made a quarterback, Amari Hampton, he's had an excellent year, well over a thousand yards rushing. What do you tell your defense to really prepare for to stop these guys? They do have a good offense. They always have good players. And, um, you know, statistics are important, but they don't mean anything in rivalry games. They don't. And, and so it's about defending what they do, contested coverage on their receivers, pressuring Drake May, not letting him set his feet and have all day back there. And we have to stop the run. You know, we can't let 28 have a heyday. He's a really good back, and they do a good job with them. Their tempo is a part of that. Right. And so if we can slow down their tempo and, and allow our offense to grind out some drives, that complimentary football is going to be a big piece in this thing. General purposes, not just specifically in this game, but when you do have an offense that's so balanced that you're going against, well, do you try to take something away? Well, what is something as a defensive-minded guy that you want to do in those type of contests? You know, I think you always want to stop the run first. I think, yeah. to me, if you can make a team one-dimensional, uh, what you can call on defense changes, you know. And if you're allowing them to have the run game, then it opens up their playbook. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be a big part of what we have to do. And at times, there'll be pressure on our corners and, and our nickels to cover man-to-man -man because of that. But that's part of what we like to do on defense is bring the pressure. Coach, I want to talk about your offense, too, because you guys have overcome so much. And you've got a guy, Brennan Armstrong, who you've only had for a year that was the guy, then wasn't the guy, and now is the guy again. What's the main thing that you've learned just throughout his journey here with the Wolfpack? Yeah, I'm so impressed with him as a human being, just the way that he battled through that four-week window, uh, the kind of teammate that he was, the leadership that he showed. 
Uh, he came in off of a very difficult year at Virginia and wanted to right the ship for him. And, and just, you know, for whatever reason, it wasn't clicking. And, and coming out of that reset, he is playing good football. He's playing hard. He's scrappy. He's tough. And he's having fun, man. And more than anything, that's what I love seeing is how much fun Brennan's having playing the game. Coach, I got one more for you because you see the 22 next to NC State. Is yeah. that a big deal to you? Because I know, on, baby, I know you don't really care for stats. I, I've always known yeah. you to be that way. But you look at it, you guys 25th in the top 25 in the country. That's a big deal. Yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the year, I always tell these guys this. Rankings in the preseason don't mean anything. It's where yeah. you are at the end. And November means a lot. And, to, and this game will be a part of that. But, yeah, I think you earn your record. You earn your ranking. And uh, beating Clemson, Miami, Wake Forest, Obviously, in a row, in a row, in a row, and then what we did in this last game with Virginia Tech has earned that notoriety, and now it's just time to finish it. Yeah. Now you got a big opportunity tonight. You've won the last two against North Carolina. We will see you in prime time tonight, going up against the Tar Heels, Coach. We appreciate the time this morning. Thanks a lot. Y'all stay warm. Go yeah, back. We're gonna try to we'll do that. All right. Speaking of that game tonight, let's get to our Saturday slate. And EJ, tell us what you're looking forward to in this matchup. Look, absolutely, the main event of the evening. The reason we are back in Carter Finley. Look, this is all coming down to a huge matchup between interstate rivals, the Tar Heels versus the Wolfpack. Hills quarterback Drake May on his farewell tour after a tough loss last week versus Clemson. NC State QB Brennan Armstrong, we just talked about him. He is seeking this team's ninth win. Expect a big day from both QBs. Yep. Still ahead, we take a look at the Wolfpack Turk Monument. The artist was uh, Dick Idol, who played quarterback for the legendary White Shoes defense here at NC State in the 60s. And speaking of those rivalries, the margin for error is pretty small, you know, and I told the team going into this, we're going to have to play really complimentary football, everything we can to get ready for our rivalry. Finley back to throw, looking down the sideline, back shoulder, it's caught, into the end zone, Devin Carter, touchdown NC State, what a throw by Finley in his first start. 30 to 27, North Carolina needs a field goal to tie, Burnett to send it to a third overtime. What a game. NC State comes in and pulls off the upset and gets a huge win in this rivalry. Thankful to have this W with them. It's going to be a great night. Turn the red light on, Chancellor Woodson. Go by. What a game it was last year. It's a big game anytime these two get together. And you heard, Coach, they're hoping, in, hoping to light it red tonight. We'll see what happens 8 o'clock tonight on ACC Network. But let's revisit some of the best moments in this rivalry, shall we? Because this game rarely disappoints when these two teams get together. Take you back to 1975. North Carolina scores a touchdown with 12 seconds left, goes for two, and the win. Instead of tying it with the extra point, they're stopped, and the Wolfpack win it 21-20. to Fast forward now to 1998. Heels down three in overtime, made a touchdown for the win. It's Oscar Davenport for the 14-yard touchdown to give North Carolina a dramatic win in that one. But that's not the end. Let's take you about to 2020, or 2012, rather. Tied at 35, 30 seconds left. Giovanni Bernard Gio. to the house. 73-yard punt return for the win to help Carolina snap a five-game losing streak like those helmets do. And the last time this oh, game was yeah. played at Carter Finley Stadium uh, two years on, ago, NC State e. down nine, Emeka Amezi with two minutes to go. E. Onside kick, touchdown to Emeka to steal the win for the Wolfpack. He's here oh, hanging out with us hey, all day long. Hey, hey. Future broadcaster and a phenomenal player in the record books here at NC State. Now you take a look at the series all time. North Carolina has the upper hand, but this has been much closer in recent years. I mentioned it earlier. These teams, they've split their last 28 games by a combined margin of 13 points. The Wolfpack have won six out of the last 10 meetings, including the last two. So we'll see who wins this game tonight. But let's talk a little North Carolina because we got to hear from Coach Dorian, Doran earlier and what he thinks of this game and, and his team, what they'll be able to do in it. Emac, Drake May. 
Could be the last time we see him yeah. playing in a collegiate game. Don't know what will happen in the postseason. Don't know for sure what happens next year. What do you want to see from him in this game tonight, bouncing back after last week? You know, really just to, to continue to lock in. I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. The, the things that he does uh, that, that are difficult for some are very easy for him. How he manipulates the pocket, the subtle movement right to left, the quiet feet, uh, can air it out, can drop it off in a hat like you see right here. Uh, this young man is so impressive. And, and honestly, tonight against this defense, it's going to take everything he has. Yeah. These guys are going to dial it up. They're going to try to send pressures, try to confuse him with different coverages, which we saw last year really work. And so, EJ, I want to see him just be the number one overall pick and go out here and, and get a dub if that's what it takes. I think it's important for Drake to have a good game because, again, we talked about it last week going up against Clemson's defense. The yeah. scouts are going to watch that. Now, look, Drake's going to go top five in the draft. That's that's done. Lock. But I still do think it's important for him to cap off his college career. Whether he plays in a bowl game or not, you figure that out in December. But have a good one here in Carter Finley. The, the other part, Brennan Armstrong, how do you want to finish your career in the regular season? It's a senior night. It's an important night for him. Granted, he's not he hasn't been here in Raleigh a long time, but I know he wants to go out the right way. Also, Casey Concepcion, what would he do in this game? And how would Robert and I create offensive plays for him? Yeah, I'm going to challenge uh, UNC's receivers. You got to beat man coverage. Clemson lined up, played man to man all game long. They didn't hide from it, yeah. barely disguised. They didn't disguise it really either. It was like, hey, Nate Wiggins, you got Taz, man on man all game long. They're going to do the same thing. NC State's going to play a lot of man coverage. Aiden White's gone. If I'm Coach Doran, you're following Taz Walker all game long. Clemson gave him the blueprint. So now it's just about being able to beat that for UNC. Sold out crowd tonight here at Carter Finley Stadium. Over 56,000 expected. Cannot wait to see it. And you guys, this is not an easy place to play in front of this sold out crowd. Actually, a few places in the ACC have been harder to play over the last five seasons than Carter Finley Stadium. 26 and 7. That is good for the second best home field advantage in the ACC. You see, only Clemson has a better home field record in that span. Going to be tough atmosphere fears all over the place so let's take you a little bit more inside the helmet and inside the huddle all right we're down here on the field and we want to show you guys the chaos the craziness of what rivalry week really means and that means a lot of loud crowds okay right, yeah, so yeah. we're going to have emac be our center jake our researcher is going to be our left guard kelsey's going to be our slot receiver eddie's going to be our all-star receiver we want to show two different things the big first thing is the communication in the huddle and a young quarterback, Tate Rodemaker, in a matchup with Florida, he's going to forget something within the formation, within the call, mm -hmm. and he's going to try to communicate that back to me. The second thing is the quarterback to the center relationship communication. If you can't hear me down here, yeah. we're trying to do a cadence. We've yeah. got to go to silent cadence. So Jake's going to help us out with that. All right, so let's get in the huddle. Let's go. Let's go. Break it up, baby. Let's go. It's loud. All right, it's third and seven, guys. So we got to take care of this. All right, we got trips left, 73, Z short. Z short post, the one-on-one. Ready? Oh, oh. Z, short, Z, short, post, Z, short, post, that's me, that's me, that's me. 73, that's 73, that's everybody's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go, here we go. 55 the mic, 55 the mic, 55 the mic. Here we go, here we go. Blue 80, blue yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this is the part, he said short, that's the motion for me. For me to be able to get out there and make plays, I need my quarterback to put me in the right position. It's a lot of mechanics that happen before the play. I'm not worried about Tate Rodemaker after the ball is hiked. It's the things before the snap that he needs to get right. He needs to motion me in there so I can be in the right position. All right, and that's the communication from the quarterback to the receiver. So let's run it back, you man. Here we go. Five, 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 five. Hey, five, five, Mike, five, five, Mike. I remember my motion. Blue 80. Blue 80. Hot, 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 hot. Hot the ball. Ah. I can't hear you. Now, this is the second part. I can't part. hear you. Listen, this is a tough part, especially with the offensive line. When you're in Columbia, you're in Gainesville, you're right here in Carter Finley, you cannot hear the quarterback. Absolutely. So we got to go to that silent count, get that communication. Gotta go to a silent cadence. So let's get set up. Now, the silent cadence, the key to this is our researcher right here, Jake. He's going to look for the quarterback's heel click. You're going to see this all day on Saturday when it's loud. Jake, you're going to look back. As soon as I click this foot, you're going to tap me, Mac, and then we're going to run five, 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 five. All right, here we go. Here we go. Silent cadence, silent cadence. Mike, five, five. All right, we're set. Here we go. Boom. I get the ball. Kelsey's across. Eddie's right there. Ooh. Bang. Touchdown. 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 Every quarterback in these types of situations, you got to relax. You got to breathe. You got to remember, baby. Go out there and ball. Let's go. That was great. That was great. Good job. Good stuff. I wish you would have actually scored that touchdown, though. You stopped a little short. I didn't, like, didn't want to mess up. He didn't want to get paid on his shoes. No yeah, ice cream yeah, for yeah. you, Made but ice cream if you go to the whole <laughs> Howling Cow for a little ice right cream. Now? Over 50 years, they here. made ice cream I, I, right here on campus. We do not want ice cream right now. It is far too cold for that. And meanwhile, PNC Arena right across the street from where we're sitting here at Carter-Finley Stadium. And last night, EMAC 
We got to sound the siren. Take a look. Welcome to the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Cotter, thanks so much. Welcome out to Raleigh, North Carolina. You can see the fans excited for this primetime rivalry matchup tonight where the Wolfpack will take on North Carolina. That's at 8 o'clock right here on ACC Network. But we say hello right now from outside Carter Finley Stadium alongside EJ Manuel and Eddie Royal. And happy Kelsey Eddie Riggs. Royal. Great to be with you. <laughs> a very happy Eddie Royal because it is a 24 to nothing lead for Virginia Tech. How about Mike Elko? First coach in Duke history to win at least seven games in each of his first two seasons. Don't a little bit chilly coach. out here, but don't worry. We're going to have a hot one tonight between NC State and North Carolina primetime game here on ACC Network. And we welcome you back out to Raleigh, where we've got part of the 56,000 that are going to be at the game tonight. Y'all ready for the game? Yeah. Little ones, get the little I know ones. these look like they're Duke colors, but don't worry. They're good T-shirts. Y'all want some T-shirts? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. North Carolina Let's see what shirt. we got. Low man, low man. OK. There you go. OK. Way low in the man. back. I don't know why I always go for the long low ones. Man. Let low man get it. Yes. Yeah, right there. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Going to be a good one tonight. A sold-out crowd at Cardinal Finley Stadium. Of course, NC State has won the last two in this rivalry matchup. We'll see what North Carolina has in store, trying to bounce back from their loss last week. Meanwhile, we'll see you in just a little while right here on ACC Network from inside Carter Finley Stadium. Pre-game show coming your way. But right now, Virginia Tech up 24-0 over Virginia at the half. Welcome into the ACC huddle. What a game that was, and somehow we feel like we are just getting started. Carter Finley Stadium getting ready for a sold out crowd of more than 56,000. The fans, they've been tailgating since 9 a.m., and that food is looking good. We'll see which team is feeling good after it's all said and done. I don't know what this what is fan that? is doing and who he's pulling hey, for, but it sounds times. like it. he's going to be the only one that's leaving happy today. Meanwhile, Matt Brown. <laughs> Brown, trying to see if Big his back. team can get back on track after losing last week and get back on track in this rivalry. Meanwhile, will it be a red solo cup. cup at the end of the night for Dave Doran <laughs> as he tries to win his third straight against North Carolina and his fifth straight to close out the season? He's got a new starting quarterback. It's the quarterback they started the year with, Brennan Armstrong, back in the lead for this team and trying to bring home a win in the final game of the regular season. The Wolfpack fans are ready. The Wolfpack mascot also ready. And what will go down tonight in this rivalry matchup on a nice night here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We cannot wait to see it. We're with you for about the next hour here on ACC Network. It's also senior night. 13 seniors honored tonight for NC State. And of course, the guy who epitomizes everything you want to be as a football player, a leader, and off the field. Peyton Wilson, one of the stars. And speaking of stars, North Carolina quarterback Drake May. Is this the last time we'll see him play a collegiate game? What does the future hold for him? Well, we'll see what tonight holds here at Carter Finley Stadium in just about an hour. As we say hello, welcome into the ACC huddle alongside Eddie Royal, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and our Hall of Famer, Coach Mark Rick, Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you. And guys, it has been a great day of football so far. We've got some big rivalry games coming up. Meanwhile, counting you down to kick oh, off with Bojangles. Pleasant Pleasant How's your family? How's you know you what we should do? Turkey. We should take these and we should all do a voiceover yes. for our last oh, game of the season, good. Dan Presser. If we could do that, that would be great. I'm sure they're saying all kinds of nice things right now, but this has been 
a heated rivalry between these two teams. And that man, we're going to get to see the 113th meeting tonight. That fire Where looks like a nice warm tailgate. It's Where's probably the around the corner. You know, they probably got a whole go. setup. And oh, oh, they got the food. We got over there. Of course they got, got some ribs, some Hold buffalo on, dick, chicken. baby. Bring it in here. We want a Sweet snack. potato pie. More from the ACC huddle wrong after tell this. Wrong tell me. Oh. <laughs> We'll have updates for you on Florida State as soon as there are some. But meanwhile, also counting you down Drizzy. with Bojangles mm -hmm. to kick off here on ACC Network. Drake May has been so phenomenal in just his two seasons as the starter with the Tar Heels. And we'll see what the future holds from him with him. NFL. But we have seen some great things from <laughs> hey, Drake but, May so right. far. Hold Talk on to not to the future. <laughs> he gone. A quarterback that makes a difference, you have an it factor. When Colt McCoy and Vance Young walked into a room, everybody stopped and turned and looked at them because they had a presence. They had a confidence about them. They had a swagger. Uh, Drake has the same effect with people. Being from Charlotte, you know, he's from Charlotte as well. Uh, I played Drake, I think, two, three times in high school. I mean, he, he balled out every time. I actually played receiver in high school, and he was my seven-on-seven -seven quarterback, so I even caught balls from Drake in high school. Um, so I, I knew the type of level of player he was and the type of talent that he had. His football IQ is really good. He can definitely move when he needs to move. He's agile, he's quick, and he's got a great arm. I was very excited when he flipped from uh, Alabama and was deciding to come to UNC, because I knew this guy's the real deal. He could be the next big thing. He's got those intangibles that you have to have to be a great quarterback. He's just got to drive to win. You know, even off the field, you know, playing ping pong in the players' lounge, you know, playing like mini basketball or, uh, or even like pickleball, he's just got that drive to win. You can see it in him that he, he just hates losing. One of the reasons that he won the quarterback job was he was confident and that he gave that confidence to other players on our team, and they felt it. I just love competing with him, and I, I think I learned a lot, you know, from going up against him, you know, him being the best quarterback in the country. I mean, it, it ain't going to get much harder than him on game day. All right, so Drake May, he has already submitted himself among the ACC's best quarterbacks in just his two years as a full-time starter, throwing 61 touchdowns in his career, fourth most in the ACC history through his sophomore season. Pretty impressive stuff that we have seen from him so far. And we're going to get to see a little bit more tonight in this rivalry matchup tonight. But let's bring in our guys up in the booth, Wes Durham, Tim Hasselbeck, and Wes, the 113th meeting. And if you need a guy who can tell you everything about every one of those 113, meetings and what this rivalry is like I think we found it in Western uh, Kelsey thank you I don't know I don't know I don't know if I can tell you about all 113 but eh, the last 30 or so have been pretty compelling and this one tonight because both are eight and three and both have gotten there in very different ways but Tim it is a rivalry and just walking around on the field a half hour ago you can feel the rivalry in play tonight and they're legends that come from this game. Listen, that's what Mac Brown talked to us about. I mean, basically, heroes, legends, whatever you want to call them, come from these games. And Wes, oh, you man. remember this one with Giovanni Bernard? 11 years ago, Roy Smith was supposed to return the punt. Tom O'Brien called a timeout. And the next thing you know, Gio Bernard becomes a legend of the State Carolina rivalry. Emeka Mezzi a couple of years ago. And don't forget about Ben Finley, who is a quarterback now at Cal. He became a legend because he's one of five quarterbacks that Dave Doran has started in the last two years. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and Mac Brown was saying to us, look, Giovanni Bernard, like you put that picture up in your football facility because these games mean so much. Being at the stadium, Bill Cowher's banner in, you know, in the concourse references his stats from a game against Carolina. These games matter, and it's really about kind of who can step up and put their – footprint, their fingerprints, whatever it is, on this football game. And for Drake May, he does not have a win against NC State on his Carolina resume, Tim. Well, and you want to talk about somebody that's been a hero and been a legend. He's kind of cemented himself as that. And this is an opportunity to basically build on that in a game where that means a lot, that many believe will be, you know, his last regular season game in a Tar Heel uniform. Look, I, I think the way that he plays in a matchup especially for somebody that grew up 
understanding this matchup. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And Brennan Armstrong on the other side tonight for the Wolfpack, the most prolific left-handed quarterback in ACC history. Well, and I think what's interesting here with Brennan Armstrong, talk about a game where heroes or legends are made. Yeah. Here's a guy who started the season as a starter, basically turned the football over too much, lost his job, gets the job back, and now he's quarterbacking an eight-win team yeah. against their biggest rival with an opportunity to make a hero out of himself. Well, and I think the one thing we know about State Carolina through the years, especially the last couple years, is the game will go to the wire for you. So we think it might deliver on a Saturday night in uh, Chili Raleigh. Kelsey, great to be with you guys, and happy Thanksgiving. Wesley, Tim, thanks. Happy Thanksgiving to you. You guys look like you're bundled up, as are we, because as you said, this game always comes down to the very end. Cannot wait to see what it brings, and you're taking a look now at Drake May, who I know all you guys think so highly of and have such good things to say about what he has been able to do for this program. But Drake knows all about this rivalry, too. His dad played in North Carolina. His brother played basketball at North Carolina, and he was born and bred at Carolina Tar Heels. So, EJ, for him, if this is the last one, this has got to feel like it has a little bit extra. Absolutely. And this is going to be the last tape that you have as you head into the NFL, potentially in this offseason, uh, and ultimately just have con you know complete control of this game. I think Drake May should come out of this saying, like, I was the best player on the field tonight. Yeah. Because I, I, we all think that he is, truthfully. He, he's yeah. on the field. You know he's the guy. But don't, leave, uh, don't let any fan in here leave without any doubt to say Drake May was the best football player on this field tonight and leave it that way. I'm right there with you, man, because what an opportunity going against this defense that's going to eat you up. Yep. They're absolutely going to blitz and they have a very talented secondary that's going to go man to man. So what you have to do is throw tight window balls and get it where only your wide receiver can catch it. And he has that ability, coach. I mean, everything that he does that it, it looks like it takes a lot is effortless. I mean, right. he's just so pretty when he has the football. Uh, and to me, I think he shows tonight why he's you know the best prospect in America. You know what else he's got? Omari and Hampton. Yep. That's, a, that's a nice a addition. Yeah. The number one run game in the, in the league and, uh, you know, when they take advantage of that, that's going to really provide him the opportunity to have better, cleaner pockets for play action pass. It makes your third, third downs manageable, not third and long, because it's tough to be any quarterback in that third and long. Yeah, and, and the good thing about uh, Drake is that he's got Tez Walker as well, one of the best receivers, not only in the ACC, but in the country. Definitely one of the best deep threats. Uh, he runs very good routes, but tonight he's going to have an opportunity to go against Aiden White, one of the best one of the best cornerbacks in the ACC. He's got seven passes uh, broken up so far this year. A long corner who can you can lock up man-to-man -man in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We saw this happen with Clemson last week. They played man-to-man across Cross the board against UNC and pressure Drake May. So that's exactly what NC State likes to do. I wouldn't be shocked if they did the same thing again tonight. And also hit those tight ends, too. I mean, Carolina has probably three yeah. of the best tight ends for sure in this league. All right, yeah. and I'll put them up with anybody else in the country. So I think that's going to be key as well. Find those matchups where you have some safeties, maybe some slower linebackers, man to man coverage on a tight end out in the flat. Especially on Bryson Nesbitt. Yep. I mean, he is an yeah. absolute weapon. We, we saw what he did against Duke. I mean, really took over that football game. He, he He's a weapon. I mean, kind of that Travis Kelsey mold, mold where you flex him out wide, you try to get a smaller guy and on him. He's too fast for linebackers. He's too big for DBs, Kelsey. All right, so these guys headed back into the locker room as we are about 27 minutes away from kickoff as Bojangles counts us down to kickoff. On the other side of this break, Florida was inside the 10-yard line to end the first quarter. We'll show you what happened in that game and give you an update from Gainesville after this. The margin for error is pretty small, you know, and I, and I told the team going into this, we're going to have to play really complimentary football, everything we can to get ready for our rivalry. Finley back to throw, looking down the sideline, back shoulder, it's caught into the end zone, Devin Carter, touchdown NC State, what a throw by Finley in his first start. 30 to 27, North Carolina needs a field goal to tie, Burnett to send it to a third overtime. What a game. NC State comes in and pulls off the upset and gets a huge win in this rivalry. Uh, Thankful to have this W with them. It's going to be a great night. Turn the red light on, Chancellor Woodson. Go five. 
Coach Jordan has been able to say that the last two times that these two teams have played, and we'll see what happens in tonight's game as Bojangles counts us down to kickoff in this rivalry matchup senior night here for NC State, and they've got some special players that they are honoring, but a big game nonetheless with everything on the line still. Another nine-win season potentially for NC State. Let's get to Taylor Tannenbaum with Dave Doran before the game. Coach, it's a vibe here tonight. Not only your biggest rival, but 13 of your seniors will be honored here pregame. How would you describe the emotions of a night like tonight? Yeah, I talked to the players about that. You know, it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to come out here sky high. You know, you just can't let your emotions get the best of you. You got to funnel them. These kids are important. It's about finishing, and that's what seniors are. They're finishers. So we're going to play hard for these guys tonight. We're excited about it. Two really good eight and three teams, like I mentioned, big rivals. What's going to be the difference for the Wolfpack to leave here with a win tonight? That's about execution, you know, all these other things, but ball security, turnover margin, special teams play, the most physical team on the line of scrimmage. Those are the things that win and lose football games. I know you mentioned you've talked to your players about a lot of things this week. You give your final big message yeah. at the hotel before you board the buses. What was the final message you left with your guys? La Familia, go play for each other. It's all about the brotherhood tonight. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. Go Pack. All right, Taylor, thanks so much. You mentioned the emotion and what it's like to play in this cool. game. You're 21 minutes still kicking this rivalry matchup. What's happening inside that locker room now? Yeah, right now, I mean, I'd be trying to calm my emotions and nerves because you're all excited. Your entire family's here, all that you've worked for up until this moment. I mean, you think about when you're training in the offseason, you're thinking about this game, these rivalry games, these big-time games. So just trying to calm the nerves, make sure I know what I'm doing when I get out there yeah, on the field. There's no doubt about it, Eddie. You're so excited in a top of it being senior day you got to control those emotions right because you do have to go and play a game uh, these guys will be just fine all right so on the other side of this break we got to take you through a little bit more of what's happened but we're also going to be joined by an nc state superstar Emeka Ameki. Yeah! he knows yeah. all about yeah. what it's like to play in this rivalry win <laughs> in this rivalry and come up with a big time play One of the fired up rivalries in all of the ACC. It is a sellout crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. NC State down nine, one timeout left. Leary's got to take a shot. Has a player wide open. NC State is going to score. Omeka Amezi, 64 yards. What a thing yet, Riley. State set for the onside kick. NC State. They're going to throw it. Leary's going to take a shot. Has a receiver. It is caught. Touchdown, NC State. Omeka Amezi from 24 yards out. NC State comes back to win in one of the all-time greats in this series history. two years ago. They won last year as well. And somebody that I'm sure smiles every time he sees that or sees a Wolfpack win <laughs> is Emeka Amezi, one of the great wide receivers that has come out of NC State, spending a little time with us. What's it like for you to be back watching this game when it means so much to everybody on this field? Yeah, it's very emotional just knowing the, the stakes that are at hand and it's always important to beat up on your rivals, so just being back is everything to me. Seeing the fans and everybody coming to talk to me is everything. I love it. Coach Doran's got 80 wins. You were a big part of his success here. What's he meant to you as a man? Yeah, Coach Doran is the leader of the pack. You know, we always talk about that, who's going to be the leader of the pack. Not everybody has to be that, but we all follow him. And it's all about HTT, Hard Tough Together. And he just, he leads our identity of the school. And we just all follow him and lead and listen to him. Oh, back up. Walk, walk me into the locker room. You got a guy in Brennan Armstrong who transfers in. Uh, you, you're not winning games. Stuff's going downhill. Put another cat in, and MJ Morris, who we thought was going to be spectacular. He decides to, to sit down and redshirt. And then the team's in a, in a really weird spot. What do you do? How do you respond? How did they get to this moment where they're staring down a possible 10-win season down? Right. That's that's what Coach Dorn's about, though. He always teaches us just the next man up. You know, no matter what the, the circumstances are, you decide to redshirt or somebody gets hurt. You know, mm -hmm. we've been in a situation so many different times with uh, back when Devin Leary got hurt. 
there, and then Bailey Hawkman has to step up. So we've been in situations like this, and it just defines us as a team, defines him as a head coach that no matter what happens, that we're going to win. We're going to find a way to win and get into a situation like we are now at 8 and 3. Well, Mecca, you obviously held it down at the wide receiver position here at NC State. But Casey Concepcion has come on, and he's been fantastic. I think he's going to be a freshman All American. What makes him special as a wideout? Well, just his, his football IQ. I think it starts with that. Being able to line outside on the outside receiver, being able to line the slot receiver, lining up at the running back and knowing what to do and execute at such a high level as a freshman and being able to lead the college FBS and receiving yards and all these explosive plays. Like He's a dynamic player and it's so much fun having him on our, our team. Mecca, you perfected the back shoulder catch, <laughs> you so to speak. I mean, there's so many times that happened. Did you always expect that to come that way? Or was it, well, I mean, what was the technique? Did you react to the ball or did you know it was coming? I think it was a, a, a mixture of me and Devin Leary, we just put so much time in together. And then also Kelvin Harmon, I just learned so much from him. He taught me so much how to go up with strong hands and be confident. And, and during practice, you just practice that so many times. I just I made a commitment to myself to be good at the nine ball. So every single day, I would get at least two nine balls in one on one. I didn't care if the DB knew what was coming. But and then it just showed on game day, you know, all those reps that you take and then it ends up showing up. It was beautiful. Yeah. Bro, so you've been shadowing us all day long. He's been with us all day all long. Since all this morning, freezing your butt early. off with us. <laughs> yeah, you got to bring a coat next time. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm just curious uh, uh, what you think. Is this something you want to do when you're done playing? Mm. How, how, how's the day? been for you absolutely I love it I think also just having such a great crew like you guys that have good energy and just smiling and make it fun to be around people like this made me love broadcasting even that much more and just being in that room with you guys and just the energy that you guys bring made it so much more exciting for myself Eddie pay him what you promised him yeah right we appreciate that it's always good to have you here and to continue to watch what you're, you've done you know on the field and now off the field as well senior night tonight and one of the guys who have, you guys have been lucky to have for 100 years is Peyton Wilson, who you know and who you played with and who just, I think, epitomizes what you want to get out of a player and a person here at NC State. What does he mean to this program? He's everything. He, he's a guy that believes in himself so much and has been through so much different things. And he was my roommate at one point, and we've had a lot of deep talks. And anytime he needs some help, you know, I would go to him or if I, either way, vice versa. And just the way he's able to battle through all these injuries and now he's the best defensive player in college football, I believe. And um, it's just it's just so important for our team. And it's the way he plays his heart out every single day. And that's what the Wolfpack is all about. These guys think that he should be ACC player of the year, potentially more on the nationwide scale as well. Emeka, we appreciate the time, not just now, but all day today, yeah. you hanging out with Great us. Job. And thanks for, thanks for the time here. Um, guys, we got some other updates to get in before we get back into this game and what you're going to see in this rivalry matchup because there are some big time updates, starting with what we saw in Clemson EMAC. They come right out and Tigers don't have the ball, but that doesn't matter. They're going to score. Yeah, this is just a great heads up play here by the true freshman Khalil Barn. Everybody else is stopping. He said, I'm going to pick this ball up and take it to the crib. The review showed that it was that. And then the very next play, he was able to get an interception. Hey, but then that was actually Whoa. not, didn't count. So for the touchdown. So he stepped out of bounds, they said. But you see Florida State. This was a controversial personal foul on third and goal on Akeem Dent. And then it sets up this for Florida. You see the call there. Ike Norvell clearly not happy about it. Go ahead. Terrible call. I mean, what I'm they, not happy either. What'd they call? Personal foul is Come what they on. call. Wow, the 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 and Montrell Johnson rushing touchdown. Two plays later. Right now, it is Florida with the seven-point lead over Florida State. Still a lot of time left to go in the second quarter of this game, but we'll see what they're able to do. You see Tate Rodemaker's stats hasn't been able to do too much and get it going yet. You guys mentioned the run game, and they need to get it running right now. Negative 10 rushing yards on the ground for Florida State as well in that game. More on this tonight on the ACC Huddle. Also taking a look at what's happening all across college football because Florida State is number five now. Washington is number four and they were in an absolute battle with Washington State. Comes down to the very final play, 21-21 and Washington able to kick the 42-yard field goal to win it right there at the end. They survive in advance and you can see tough game for Penix all the way around.
around as they get the job done. So that's a look at what we have so far. Georgia and Georgia Tech just kicked off as well, and we'll continue to keep you updated on what's happening across the ACC and all across college football with an eye on the college football playoff. Meanwhile, all eyes here in Raleigh are on what's happening tonight at Carter Finley Stadium. The lights are down low, the music is loud, and we are about ready to go. Our final thoughts on this rivalry matchup between NC State and North Carolina coming your way after the break. How you been? Have a good holiday? Welcome back into ACC Huddle. We are counting you down to kick off. You see NC State just taking the field as they get ready for the rivalry matchup with North Carolina trying to win their third straight over the Tar Heels. And you know the fans are always jacked up for this one. You see Coach Doran jacked up as well. And speaking of the fans that are jacked up, if you're a Wolfpack fan, you might remember uh, this. Greg Haas, his wife told him to storm the field here at Carter Finley. If they beat North Carolina a couple years ago, well, he did, and he ended up breaking his leg. But the paramedics, Ben and Tracy, they took care of him. Coach Dorm and the team sent him a message, a signed ball. Last year, he came back, had the paramedics uh, say, said thank you to them. And now he's here on set with us because this is a big matchup if you're a fan. Was it worth it? Absolutely. I'm here right now with you guys. <laughs> I mean, that, that's worth it alone. <laughs> uh, what's this game like to take in as a fan? Oh, it's so much. Uh, it's electric. I mean, you can hear it. Uh, we talk about it for... I don't know, three months, you know, you, as soon as the schedule comes out, you're like, all right, when we got UNC, uh, it's, it's the best game in the, in the, in the year. Just explain the fandom. Where, did, where does it come from? Give me the background story. I need something. Yeah, my family's from Raleigh. Uh, I joined the military right out of high school. So, like, I was born and my dad was like, you're a Wolfpacker. I was like, let's go. Okay. Like, yeah, so just, I'm, I'm diehard. This is number 27 game in a row. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. Come home on, and away. Uh, come home on. and all away. Right, so what do you expect? I know you got your own podcast. Yeah. Talk about yeah, it. Toughy talk, what are yeah. we going to see tonight, man? Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be old school, right? Like, you know, when we get the ball, we're just going to just grind it with uh, Brennan, maybe get another 40 minutes on the time clock, and uh, I'm hoping for a Wolfpack win, man. Come on. Yeah. Well, Greg, you look at this defense. What do they have to do to slow down Drake May? Yeah, you just you, you got to play really tough up front, and we got to stop the run with Hampton. You know, he's a really good running back. Uh, I'm excited what Tony Gibson's going to do tonight. Uh, you know, we, we took care of him last year. Uh, I hope it's not that close. Right, right. I've got a brother-in-law who's got a beard just like you. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually Actually, he uses it for leftovers. He like eats, and he just it stuff gets stuck. Yeah. And then he takes it out. And then when he wakes up, he he like eats what's left over in his uh, beard. Is hey, I, I cooked two legs of ram out in the parking lot, and I oh. probably got a little bit left over. <laughs> I, I get it. What's the it, recipe? It still what's the good. recipe? Oh man, you got to throw some parsley, oregano, uh, a little mint, uh, garlic. Got to have that garlic, man. Where did you find the ram? The ram, uh, my local butcher, man. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, it was delicious. That's amazing. All right, look, we had a Mecca Mezzi on. Yeah. We had Tory Holt on before. Oh, yeah. You got an all-time favorite player? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, Ted Brown probably, okay. like old school. Yeah. I, I've met him a couple of times. Super good dude. Hey, my favorite player is anyone that puts on the red I was white. just going to say, oh, okay. Brock, well, I, like I was going to say whoever okay. scores the game-winning touchdown for you That's tonight. For sure. Greg, we are just <laughs> moments away. We appreciate the Thank time. You so much. And cannot wait to see what this Go game pack. has in store. Also, I want to tell you, Georgia Tech scored first on Georgia. It is seven to nothing right now in this game. As you see, Georgia Tech march straight down the field. And then, EJ, your guy, Haynes King. Absolutely. Being creative, taking the ball into his own hands, running in there for a touchdown. That's huge. Seven to zip. So Georgia now has the ball. We'll see what kind of answer that Georgia Tech is able to have against the number one team in the country. Meanwhile, we're going to take this in with our new friend, Greg, and see what <laughs> NC State is able to do here at home, trying to win their fifth straight game this season and looking for three in a row against North Carolina. The game coming your way in just moments. Tim Hasselbeck, Wes Durham, Taylor Tannenbaum. Take it over, Wes. Kelsey, thank you. While both teams are eight and three tonight, it's a standalone moment for both the Tar Heels and the host Wolfpack. The last 12 games in Raleigh are even at 6-6. Both teams separated by just one game in the last two years. Who becomes a legend of this rivalry tonight? Which team walks away with the upper hand for the next year? Welcome to State Carolina. You know, me and Coach Brown and the whole team shares the same same feeling about NC State. 
you know, beating them um, is one of the main goals going into the season, you know, win our state. All rivalries are, are very intense, but you know, when they're within 30 miles, it's a little different. Bragging rights are very real. These fans do not like each other. Well, you know the headliners in the bout, they're defined. Peyton Wilson, one of the nation's best linebackers at work in his final home game. Last year's ACC Player of the Year, Drake May, wants a win over the Wolfpack for his Carolina resume. And Mac Brown's team has come over on I-40 and taken that Ridge Road exit. And here they are tonight at Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh for the 113th meeting between the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels. We welcome you to Saturday night ACC primetime. Terrific way to finish our regular season with Tim Hasselback, West Durham, Taylor Tannenbaum here in just a moment. This is going to get really interesting. Both are eight and three, and both got to eight and three different ways. Both have really good players. Both teams don't like each other. I mean, that's the reality of it. It's what it should feel like at the end of the season. A rival, two really good teams, well coached teams, good players on both sides of the ball. I think we're in for a good one, Wes. Well, we've talked about quarterbacks, but there are other elements to this. And we might want to start with a guy who potentially might be the ACC Rookie of the Year. But here's the way that NC State got there, winning five of their last six. Carolina, the 6-0 and start, Tim. Stumbled to the 2-3 and three finish, including the loss at Clemson. Yeah, to your point, you know, things kind of stabilized for NC State when the quarterback situation got worked out. And they started to get the football to their talented freshman wide receiver, KC Concepcion. Now, here's the deal with him. He's a wide receiver. But he's going to line up everywhere. He'll be in the backfield. They'll hand it to him. He'll run between the tackles. He'll get outside. But then they'll motion him back outside and throw him the football. So he has been outstanding. He is who they want to get the football to. On the other side, a much more traditional look. It's Amarian Hampton, the big 220-pound back that has breakaway speed. You see up over 1,400 yards. He's been outstanding. Coming off of a tough game a week ago where he put the ball on the turf, I am for sure he's going to be ready to go tonight. It'll be a physical game because of number 28 for Carolina on offense. I tell you what, you can feel it when you go down on the field about an hour ago of what this is going to be about tonight. And now Taylor Tannenbaum has joined Carolina's Mac Brown. Coach, this is a game that holds a lot of meaning. How would you describe the demeanor of your team heading into this one? I love rivalry week. All the games the last three days have meant so much to so many people. And to have it on Thanksgiving where we're so thankful for the kids that play and the coaches and the supporters, we just have a wonderful game and this one will be no different tonight. Coach, this has been a close game against your rival the last two years. One score games, what's it going to take for your heels to get back on the bus with a win tonight? We got to be tougher longer. We got to take care of the football and force some turnovers. And I say forced because people just don't drop it. <laughs> And we've got to make sure that we find a way to win. Got to have a lot of confidence when you're on the road. They've played really well here. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, Mac Brown with Taylor Tannenbaum. And of course, when you talk about these two head coaches, Tim, now we're talking about the winningest coaches at their respective institutions. Both guys have done tremendous jobs at their school. Obviously, Mac's second time here. He's made them good right away. And Dave Dorn, I think, has done a remarkable job. You think of all the quarterbacks that have played for him, they are a tough, competitive football team every year. The fact that both teams are sitting at eight wins, I think tells you the job that both men have done with the, these teams that they've coached. So Dave Doran, who earlier this year passed the great Earl Edwards with his 80th win here at NC State. He's got over 100 in his career. So North Carolina, after NC State won the toss, the Tar Heels will receive. 
So a Carolina team, of course, that fell by 11 at Clemson last week. One and two on the road in the ACC, five and six since 2021 on the road in conference venues. And a full house settling in for the 113th meeting between the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels here tonight in Raleigh. So the Wolfpack's going to tee it up. Colin Smith, one of dozens of North Carolinians on the field tonight, will kick it away. Carolina has Doc Chapman, a true freshman from Virginia Beach, back to return the kicks. He's averaging 22 yards on just three returns, his longest in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. And away we go tonight from Raleigh. There'll be no return. And so Mac Brown's offense in the capable hands of the legacy of quarterback. Here's Drake May, Tim. He's such a good player. He sees things well. He's competitive. He's got a tremendous arm. He's got ability to create offense. He's dangerous as a runner. I mean, there's a lot that he does well, but he is up against a really good defense tonight, Wes, and a team that's played well against him in the pass on that side of the ball. May a year ago. Had one touchdown, one interception, and 233 yards in the double overtime loss. And Hampton on first down, cannot find room. And C.J. Clark, along with Aiden White from the secondary, takes Hampton down for a loss of one. Yeah, and Carolina runs right into a blitz. You see the pressure coming that way, and that's part of the reason that Jalen Scott is right there for the big collision as well. Pretty good start for Tony Gibson's defense. Tar Heels put three in the boundary. Made a throw for the first time tonight. Pumps now wants to step up. He'll be tackled at the 27. A flag down. Savion Jackson was able to track him down. Adam Savoie is our referee tonight. Holding offense number 65. Finishing at the climbs. The third down. Take a look at this. Drake May, he's going to have a receiver fall here, and then Copenhaver, who I believe is there, he has both guys fall down. First, J.J. Jones slips, then Copenhaver slips. I saw guys losing their footing in warm-ups. It hasn't rained, but might be a factor tonight. Carolina on third down. First in the ACC, ninth nationally at nearly 50%. Third and long, May a long throw, and it's offline. Copenhaver underneath. Walker was on the deep run, and the Tar Heels go three and out on the opening possession. So basically, they're running a go outside, and they're running an outbreaking route by Copenhaver. You see the inside release by Tez Walker. That draws the attention of the corner outside Aiden White. You see Tez Walker thinking, hey, maybe throw that one up to me. But I think by taking the inside release, it clouded the picture for Drake May. Jalen Coit averages just 12 yards a return. NC State fourth in the ACC when it comes to punt returns this season. And this is Tom McGinnis to punt it away for the Tar Heels. Coit at the 30. Scoots to the far side. He'll get 10, maybe 11 on the return as he goes out of bounds near the Carolina 40 or the NC State 41 yard line. And when you talk about NC State's QB summary, we start with Brennan Armstrong, Tim. Well, we start with Brennan Armstrong, but he kind of turned over the ball too much. Not kind of, he turned the ball over too much, which made them turn to MJ Morris, who went three and one as a starter. But then MJ Morris ended his season and it went back to Brennan Armstrong, who I think has handled the situation about as good as you could possibly handle it. 
And I think because of that, the team is rallying around number five being back at quarterback. Armstrong on first down with Raphael in the backfield, and he's going to slip it here to the near side. And here is the young freshman, Concepcion, shoved out of bounds by Chapman, and a flag has been thrown on Don Chapman's tackle of Casey Concepcion. The officials are talking it over, Wes, but it, late flag, but clearly for a late head out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number two. 15 penalty. First down. Tim, we've all seen rivalry games since Thursday that get heated pretty quick. Adam Savoy and I think his crew, they want to keep the volume turned down as much as possible. That's exactly what I was thinking. There's some drawing going on right now with Desmond Evans and the offensive line for NC State. And I would just say part of it is just keeping your poise early in the game. I would not be surprised if that's the note that Mac Brown is writing down right now. Don't hurt your team. You already had a holding penalty. Now you get a person a foul penalty. Just giving away yardage. Lassane and Collins, the wide receivers here. Here's Armstrong on the move. Shoots it for Concepcion. Inside the Tar Heel 25 and a Wolfpack first down at the 22. Well, They've had two snaps, and number 10's touched it twice. Well, he's who they want to get the football to. They bring him across in motion. He runs to the flat and then turns up. Just a bit of a wheel route, and then good touch on the football by Brennan Armstrong, who delivers the throw on the move. 23-yard throw to Concepcion. And two minutes in, NC State's just outside the red zone. And Armstrong now checks to the left and Concepcion is the quarterback with the inverted wishbone and here he goes on the keeper to the right side and wrapped up and dropped at the 18 it'll be a gain of four on the first down snap tackle made by the Tar Heel leader in tackles with better than 100 Cedric Gray just look at the uniqueness of the formation they're going to challenge you Concepcion under center Brennan Armstrong kind of in the shotgun he motions out all of the pre-snap chaos what really what it's designed to do, not necessarily confuse the defense for North Carolina, but basically prevent them from being able to double KC Concepcion. Robert Anai, he's got his catalog ready. Concepcion comes out, Armstrong's back in the game, and so is Kendrick Raphael with him in the backfield. And here is the give to Raphael, and he'll plow forward for just a couple into the arms of Cedric Gray. So Carolina defensively has had some struggles but tonight the struggle may be a little harder because Elijah Huzzy who is their premier playmaker in the secondary Tim is out an ankle injury last week has put DJ Jones a converted running back who started out playing very well kind of in relief of Huzzy on the point again after 70 snaps last week after the Huzzy injury at Clemson look Huzzy just. He's been a great corner for them. He's played inside well, he's played outside well, he plays the ball well, and he would be the guy that would be challenged with marking Concepcion. He's not available. Here's Armstrong, follows Demarcus Jones into the line, and Carolina stands up Brennan Armstrong for little to no gain on the play. And Braden Norvison is going to trot out here because NC State's chance for a score will have to come on the foot of Narvison you see the fourth and six or less ESPN analytics says this is a go but Dave Doran wants to take Narvison's field goal opportunity here I think part of it rivalry game getting the first points on the board especially after getting a three and out probably where Dave Doran's head is 33 yard try and the kick is away from Narvison and it is good so Narvison and NC State Jump to an early 3-0 lead in Raleigh. ACC Network College Football Primetime is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Well, this series is delivered two years ago at Mecca. Mezzi, a dramatic finish. And then last year, double overtime at Keenan. And Dave Dorn, his wife Sarah, and embrace after the Wolfpack's double overtime win behind Ben Finley. 
And now Mac Brown and Dave Dorn are here with eight and three records and full heat back in this rivalry. NC State's won two straight, five of the last seven. But they have split the last 12 meetings in Raleigh. Chapman at the goal line. Here comes the rookie. And he got hit at the 15 and no more. Wolfpack pursued it. Jalen Parker. Great cover on the uh, first two Carolina kicks. Been great. And for, for Carolina here, you need to pick up a first down. You know, one of the challenges with this offense is that, you know, you get three and outs, and all of a sudden your defense, which has certainly been challenged this year, feels like they're on the football field a lot. Here's May, hands to Omarion Hampton who breaks free. Hampton out to the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 19 before Devin Boykin makes the stop for the Wolfpack. And this is a great sign for Carolina because it's running through tackles for Hampton. He's able to break the tackle from Devin Betty. And another one here for Hampton. Wolfpack there this time, though. And Peyton Wilson, you see 11 in the red. There's the guy from Hillsborough Orange who originally committed to Carolina, Tim. And then when signing day approached, flipped to the Wolfpack. I think it adds to the rivalry, don't you think? Absolutely. May to his left, pressure coming, back across his body and incomplete. First look at Taz Walker. It was Jalen Scott flushing Drake May to his left. And really, he's got Tez Walker wide open, but because of the pressure, just on a full dead sprint. You see Jalen Scott, who you see the pressure, just kind of prevents Drake from getting kind of situated to hit the over route, moving to his left. Now they find themselves in a third and really long. Yep, State just five in the box here. May with the play clock at 10 now, with hand signals to the perimeter. And the ball got snapped from Gaynor, flag is thrown, and... NC State swarms May at the 28. Some sort of miscommunication with Corey Gaynor, it looked like. Well, Drake was audibling, and what happened when, when he checked, Tony Gibson's defense says, we're going to check. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 18, five-yard penalty, it's third down. So after the fire drill on the snap, it only cost Carolina five. Nesbitt was the guilty party, but May was trying to find something, and you mentioned Tony Gibson's team changing. Well, so you get into these you-check-we-check you check situations where, hey, if you're audibling by looking at us, you know, and getting up and going fast, well, we're going to check out of the look we're giving you. That's what NC State did. And I think it just kind of was hard for Carolina to hold their water during that. Wolfpack only rushed three. May slipped as he reached the back of the drop. Now will tuck and run and then fumbled the ball. It popped out. And NC State has recovered. Devin Boykin and Peyton Wilson collided on the hit. And a plus territory possession for the Wolfpack who lead 3-0. Dave Dorn's got to be thrilled with the start from his football team's quarterback draw, something Carolina does a lot of in these third and long situations, and that ball's out. I also go back to the beginning of that play, Wes. It was Drake slipping as he was trying to climb up. I, I don't know if it's the, the spikes that have chosen, the guys have chosen to wear tonight, but we've seen a number of Carolina players lose their footing. Happened at the beginning of that play, and then it ends with them losing the football. Certainly not the start Mac Brown was looking for out of his football team. Somebody needs to calm them down. Ball at the 47 plus territory on the fifth fumble of the year by Carolina. 18th turnover. Or 12th turnover, beg your pardon. Here's Armstrong to his left. He's going to tuck and run. He sidesteps Eccles. Out of bounds for a couple of yards here. It'll be second down. And Brennan Armstrong. Of course, who makes his third consecutive start. It's his 38th collegiate start tonight out of Shelby, Ohio. And of course, 
at Virginia played Carolina in his career but you see the three passing scores and the three rushing scores in the last two wins for the Wolfpack. Second down and nine. And inside. They fire ahead and that's Concepcion. For about three. And all of a sudden third and medium plus maybe for the Wolfpack. And the thing with Armstrong is West just to kind of get finish up on the last few weeks for him. There's some growing pains for him. Comes to a new team. He's running an offense he's familiar with, but just some growing pains. He turned the football over. I think that forced Dave Doran's hand. As you see, definitely some some pushing and shoving at the end of this. Mm. But I think Brennan may be a little bit more comfortable with the guys around him, making better decisions with the football, which I think has certainly helped the offense and helped the team's success. Third and a half dozen. Armstrong quick throw here on the near side. It's Porter Rooks. Inside the 20. Rooks is 12th catch of the year. But I'm going to sound like a broken record on this. Just look at the defender lose his footing. I mean, it's Carolina players that are on the ground. And it's Porter Rooks wide open because of it, and they pick up the first down. I mean, West, by my count, that's, that's five guys in critical moments that have been on the ground. Wolfpack go heavy here. They bring in a converted defensive player, Isaiah Shirley. He'll move back to the right side. And they draw Demarcus Jones into the backfield with Armstrong. Here is Jones. Our beg your pardon, it's Raphael 20, not 28 Jones. And he'll reach a first down. It'll be first and goal for NC State. So Kendrick Raphael, who had the 31 yard touchdown run, against Miami to break that game open for the Wolfpack puts Carolina puts NC State first and goal inside Carolina's 10. Well I do think some of the issues at running back could present itself you know, down in in tight it's really not the area that would be a problem for them. Delbert Mims has been their short yards and goal line back pretty much all season long. They got Mims and a converted linebacker in Jordan Poole and this is Delbert Mims. And maybe a yard to the seven, but not much more. Power Eccles was the first guy in the white jersey. NC State in the red zone is ninth in the ACC, 24 touchdowns in 36 possessions, only 12 in 19 possessions in conference play. But inside the 10 yard line, they've got 19 scores in 20 trips. This three to the right and now Concepcion by himself to the left. Armstrong looks that way back across the middle and overthrows Penix. Oh boy. Stick lane was in the throwing lane but that ball was dead on Trent Penix. It was and I, I think just maybe a little more touch to drop it in over stick lane's head. Ah, it's a pretty good ball. You got to bring that one in. Listen, back end line throws you want them face mask or higher. That's what that is. I think Penix realizes it. Good creative play call by Robert and I. Kind of the window dressing to Concepcion make it look like they're going that way, and Penix is wide open. Snap again. Here's Armstrong looking. Now bails the pocket. Flag is thrown. Here's Armstrong buying time. Now he's going to sneak back at the five and die for the touchdown. We'll see if this stands. I think it's coming back on a hold. Is it still a tremendous effort by Brennan Armstrong? Holding. Offense number 65. 10-yard penalty. It's third down. Jacarius Peak, redshirt freshman Valdosta, Georgia, at right tackle. You know, it's just so tricky for offensive linemen when the quarterback is moving around right side of your screen. He just finishes him off and to be honest with you. As tight as they were I think just seeing some jersey get pulled is probably what cost him. So now third and goal back at the 18. And I think here for Brennan Armstrong learn a lesson from earlier in the season. Third and forever can't be too aggressive. 
And now we got Carolina running players on NC State some early movement. Delay of game offense five yard penalty third down. Dave Dorn wants a what for. Well and Dave Dorn's wondering what's going on. We got us for a delay a game. He's probably saying and Carolina is literally running a player onto the field yeah. starting on the offensive side of the ball. But officials deemed that the play clock could expire. So Raphael drops in with Armstrong. Here's Brennan from the pocket again, tried to shoot it in the traffic, and I think Raphael was the intended target. And fortunate that it just hits the ground incomplete. He threw it into a group that had maybe one or two NC State guys and maybe three or four Carolina guys. And that's a little bit what I was saying. It was plays like that that I think got Brennan Armstrong in trouble earlier in the season, just you know, a little careless with the ball. Some of them happening in the red zone, and so Kind of knowing the situation, knowing you're in field goal range, being careful with it's probably the better play. 41 yard try for Narvison. Hit earlier from 32 and a half. Kick is away, and it is good. So NC State, a couple red zone tries, both ended field goals. Um, so I love Wolfpack Nation to death. Do not get me wrong. I love them to death. They are the best fans in the country, and I love MJ to death, and he played some of the best ball from a quarterback that I've seen at this school today, but we got to stop booing Brennan. He is a hard nose. He is a great person. Um, just imagine if that was your kid, you know, out there on that field in front of 70,000, you know, let's get behind him. Wolfpack nation when he's in there, he's a good hearted kid. I mean, loves God. I mean, he does nothing but pat everybody on the back and play hard for us every single day. So continue to uplift him Wolfpack nation. I love y'all. That was after the Marshall game. And that tells you about two things. One, who Peyton Wilson is. And number two, how much Brennan Armstrong's impact has been felt on this team before the run here at the tail end, Tim. Uh, I think it says a lot about Peyton Wilson that he would have the courage to stand up and, and say that. And, you know, I think that Peyton Wilson, who's beloved by this fan base, he gravitates towards guys like Brennan Armstrong because of his toughness and competitiveness. As we look at it now, really two of the best leaders on this football team. Taylor? Yeah, you guys speak of the maturity you saw from Peyton Wilson there. It wasn't always necessarily like that. In fact, when he first got here, he admitted he was 17 years old. Now he's 23. I was a boy. I've grown into a man. This is what I talked to him about, his defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, and their relationship. He says, Gibby never left my side through all of the growth. He coaches me just like I was that 17-year-old, and now you're seeing that 23-year-old man succeed. And it is fantastic what he does playing football. May on first down through a rocket by Walker, and now a flag comes in. It'll be pass interference on Aiden White. First time we've seen Tez Walker in the open field. Pass interference, defense number three. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's interesting here. You're going to get Tez Walker in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's just running a glance, kind of a deeper slant. That contact is what draws the flag, and it's pretty tightly called. Third penalty on State, 30 yards, trying to get it to Walker again. That ball is fumbled after a hit from Robert Kennedy on the Tar Heel wide receiver. There was a scramble at the near sideline, but I don't believe Devin Boykin was able to recover it in the challenge with Shaheen Battle. Flag down. Here's Adam Savoy again. Illegal shift. Offense number eight and nine were moving and never reset prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. First down. We've had two snaps in this third Carolina possession and two penalties. Here's what happens. And I know Drake is fumbled. Drake needs to basically calm his group down. I mean, just between holding penalties, between legal shifts. I think there's a bit of frustration early in this football game, and somebody needs to calm the storm for Carolina. Carolina's got 37 yards of offense and 25 yards of penalties in their third possession. Little delay and Hampton trying to find some room, and there's Wilson with the hit. Back toward the first down mark at the 40. 
Robert Kennedy helped Peyton Wilson. Now the trick with you know facing Tony Gibson's defense, not only have great players like Peyton Wilson on that side of the ball, but you just never know what you're going to get. You know, you could get an all-out blitz on first down. You could get drop eight. And so it's just tough to get a beat on them defensively. May loads, throws, and it looked like Walker went down before the ball arrived. White was there in coverage again for the Wolfpack. He did. You know, Tez Walker's going to be open. He's running a, a bit of a comeback to the top of the screen. Just watch him at the top of the route. Slips and goes down. They can't keep their footing. Drake Mays 0 for 3. Carolina's 0 for 2 on third down. This is third and 11. Pack only brings three. May trying to find a crease. Will get to the 45. Took a hit from Scott. He'll be five shy of the first down. Carolina misses again on third down. That's a three and out when you throw away the penalties. And the penalties, I think, of what have probably driving Mac Brown crazy right now because getting off schedule against a very good defense makes it a nearly impossible task no matter how good your quarterback is. So Tom McGinnis will punt it away to Coit. And a fair catch asked for and made just beyond the 15. Late first period, couple of Wolfpack field goals. State will have it next in Raleigh. Well, Wolfpack and Tar Heels chewing it up in certain respects. The turf kind of when Carolina's been impacted more by this than the Wolfpack have. Well, you know, this is the quarterback draw. He slipped. Drake did, and then he fumbled, and then Tez was running a comeback. He slipped and fell. We've seen defenders slip and fall. I mean, it's been a factor in this football game so far for the Tar Heels. Jordan Poole into the ball game. And boy, what a big lick that was on the run by Raphael. Taylor? Over here on the NC State sideline, I talked to Terry, the equipment manager for the Wolfpack. I asked him, has anyone asked to change their cleats? Do they feel like they're slipping? He says no one's asked, and he said with some positivity, and nobody will either, guys. Mm. <laughs> I would find say. Find a way to stay on their feet. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the Wolfpack's backup pair is a lot closer than Carolina's might be at this point, too. But who knows? Concepcion in motion. By the way, Amari Campbell, young freshman from Manassas, Virginia, dropped a hammer on that run by Raphael. And here's a direct snap. Concepcion trying to turn the corner. He'll get to the 35. It'll be a first down for NC State. The young man from Charlotte has got a gear about him, Tim. Well, and this is just an inside ISO play. And it's again Amari Campbell trying to blow it up. And then because of that, Concepcion just bounces it to the outside, and his speed is too much. Yep. 19 yards and a first down to the 37. First two possessions for the Wolfpack ended with Narvis and field goals for this 6 0 lead. Play fake to Mims. Armstrong in trouble. Trying to run away and will throw it. Toward the Carolina bench incomplete. Campbell again along with Gray. And this time I think the turf gets Concepcion. Trying to break inside and, and he goes down. There you go. You know, we're, Wes, you and I are down there before the game on the field and seemed fine. Yep. Somewhat surprised, not somewhat, surprised that it's become this much of a factor in the football game. I would agree. Here's Armstrong to keep on the fake to Mims. And Brennan will step out of bounds, but I think he's short. So it'll be third and one, shoved out by Chapman, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Kind of a surprising play by Armstrong, somebody who's usually so physical, 
finishing runs that he kind of took himself out of bounds shy of the first down. So they're going to keep Poole in the game. Who moved over from linebacker in the bye week. Another toy in Robert Anaya's chest offensively. And Mims with Armstrong. They're going to hand to Mims and he will get the first down on third and short to the 48. Cedric Gray the tackle for Carolina with 90 seconds to go. It's always interesting Robert and I you know at Syracuse who's he going to make like the guy he had at Virginia comes to NC State well who's he going to make like a Rondé Gadsden or Keaton yeah. Thompson or Billy Kemp or take your pick. Well and it takes about half the year and when he settles in you got a converted linebacker and Jordan Poole playing running back you got Concepcion touching the ball every imaginable way and now you got a defensive end where in 88 playing like John Mackey. Yeah. He does a good job of identifying his talent. Here's a perimeter throw and the catch is made and that's Anthony Smith picking up the first down. He's now had a catch in each of the last five games the red shirt junior well, has for Dave Dorn. And Robert and I will talk about we're looking for guys to step up in the passing game and Anthony Smith is a guy that they have started to give opportunity to and you'll get more opportunity if you take a wide receiver go screen and pick up a first down. Yep. So Anthony Smith 13th career catch he has three touchdowns to his credit and now Concepcion is a running back they're going to toss it to him on the boundary side now here comes the reroute and he can't keep his feet heck of a play Bo Atkinson who played his high school football at Leesville Road here in Raleigh makes the play for Carolina and if he doesn't get him Tim I don't know who does yeah, that's great strain and effort by the Carolina defense because it initially gets blown up it's a bit of a toss sweep to the top and they do a good job of, of getting it and then Atkinson with great hustle well we're going to quarter two here in Raleigh on ACC Network primetime and NC State has two field goals from Narvison on two red zone trips you see the combined penalties Drake May is hitless in three pass attempts and a fumble and Carolina's got their fewest yards in a quarter since the Duke's Mayo Bowl a couple of years ago in Charlotte only 47 yards of offense on 10 plays for the Tar Heels but State's got the ball to start quarter two here at Carter Finley tonight Armstrong Shoots it inside and Raphael makes the catch and got hit by Campbell. And Mark Campbell's a guy they're excited about. Power Eccles is off the field. I don't know if he was shaken up or not. We may have to Taylor can find out anything there. Gray is on the field and so is Cayman Rucker. But Campbell has come in for Eccles here, Tim, in this series. And I think part of it is just playing too many snaps of their linebackers inside in an effort to get Campbell on the field and he started to play more really since the Georgia Tech game. Yep. Third in the full 10. Armstrong wants to take the shot does caught 25 yard line Rosner. The transfer from Rice in his 38th college game. Picks up a huge third down conversion, 19 yards. Great job of Brendan Armstrong. Starts to his left, works his way all the way back to his right, and then just delivers a strike. As you see, kind of the stumble coming out of the break by Rosner, but that ball right between the eight and the zero. Rosner, the third leading receiver on this NC State team coming in. That's his 17th catch of the year. He's got a couple of touchdowns. And now the Wolfpack working toward the red zone again. Concepcion in the backfield with Armstrong. Here's a little reverse. Keon Lassane with a block in front from Penix. And he will dive toward the 11. It'll be enough for another NC State first down. 11 yard run for Keon Lassane. And this is some of the stuff that Robert and I will do to you. Get this bunch look over here. You fake, but then you have the end around, and then you have all these guys blocking out in front because of that misdirection. And you know, you get the ball into the hands of one of your fastest players in Keon Lassane. I think Robert and I, as Brendan Armstrong has come back into the lineup, has been able to get to more stuff because of his comfortability with the offense. All right, ruling on the field is a first down. 
All right, very good. By the way, the Penix pirouette was lovely. I thought to uh, become the lead blocker and look at NC State holding on to the football. Dave Dorn told us we need to possess the ball Saturday night. Delbert Mims in the backfield with Armstrong to the end zone. Caught. Casey Concepcion. We said it. Ten is who they want to get the football to. It was an RPO. It's a run pass option. And because of the way Carolina responded to the run action, it's just an inside slant by Concepcion and a really nice job of Brennan Armstrong of being quick with his hands and throwing an accurate ball. Point after by Narvison. Two minutes gone in quarter two. Basically see the run action here. See the linebacker step up and then the quickness of the hands of Armstrong to get it in for a score and the Wolf Pack off to a great start. Hummel Cruz with us here in Raleigh, of course. Huddle after dark, which might be a little chilly tonight, Tim. Recap all the rivalry games over the weekend, everything else from week 13. Kelsey Riggs keeps those guys in line right here on ACC Network and always available on the ESPN app. You complaining about it being cold. I mean, like me, me and EJ, we're unaffected by the temperature. You and EJ? Yeah, we're sleeveless guys. <laughs> <laughs> NC State, 23 plays, 151 yards. There'll be no return. Will Hardy will ask for the fair catch. And time for our New York Life Drive recap. Tim. Well, listen, Brennan Armstrong, who <laughs> start of his year wasn't great. He's been great on this drive. Good accurate throw on the in cut to Rosner. Good creative play call by Robert and I. And then just an absolute laser to KC Concepcion for the score. And look, when you look at the Wolfpack offensively, they've wanted to get the ball to Concepcion. They've been able to do that. And then Brennan Armstrong has continued to make good decisions. They've got to feel great about their start. Meanwhile, Drake May and Carolina trying to find their footing. And here's Copenhaver, the tight end. Devin Boykin will shove him out of bounds after a couple of yards. First completion of the night in four throws by Drake May. You know, an interesting play here where, you know, I think he originally was trying to get rid of the ball right away, had to hold on to it, and takes a hit because of it. There's been a lot of pressure on him early. British Brooks is coming the ball game now with May. Two years ago in this game, in this stadium, he ran for 100 yards, and Carolina commits an error on the procedure call here. Copenhaver and Spencer Rolland at the right side. Ball start. Offense number 75. Rolland. Five yard penalty. Second down. Transfer from Harvard and Burnsville, Minnesota. Between the, Carolina's fourth penalty. Yeah, but I was going to say, between the slipping and the penalties, been a tough start. Yep. 13 0, the Wolfpack in front. Snap to May, not sure he was ready for it. Eludes one guy. Now we'll cut it loose in the neighborhood of. Taz Walker or J.J. Jones, Savion Jackson was pounding Drake May in the process. Wes, that's a great pickup by you. I, he's not ready for this football. It's the second time that it's happened. What's interesting is they're away from the student section. Now, they are towards the band, but I think communication, just even getting the snap tonight, has been a bit of an issue. Carolina 0 for 3 on third down. Third and a dozen here. May shoots it down the field over the head of Walker incomplete. Tess tried to make a leaping grab of it at the 41, but could not flag it down, and the Tar Heels are done in three snaps. Third three and out in four drives in this first half for Carolina. And again, it's the 
penalties that get them off schedule. And I think Drake's got a chance to pick this one up here. Ball's obviously a little high, but it also goes right through the hands of his best wide receiver. And it would have picked up the first down. Coit will wait on McGinnis's punt here. Hangs it here to the near side and a running catch by Jalen Coit at the 45 yard line. And that'll get us to a break near midfield for the Wolfpack who lead 13 nothing. All rivalries are, are very intense, but you know when they're within 30 miles, it's a little different. Bragging rights are very real. These fans do not like each other. NC State leading North Carolina 13-0. The 113th renewal of the heels in the pack. <laughs> Yeah, there's one man on an island in every seat, my man. <laughs> well, T Tar Heels lead the series 68 38, and there have been six ties. They played twice in an eight day span in October of 1894. Carolina won the first one in Chapel Hill, and the second one eight days later in Raleigh, 16 to nothing. But State has dominated, winning two straight and five of the last seven headed into tonight. Armstrong rips it to Concepcion, fights through the traffic, turns the corner, keeps his feet at the 20, and Biggers finally gets him on the ground at the 11. Another big play by the Wolfpack in this opening half. Yeah, and Gene Chizik may have to make an adjustment in terms of how they're defending KC Concepcion. Basically, he got inside leverage on an in-breaking route, but Will Hardy, even with the leverage, just gets spun around. 43 yards, Tim, they average three and a half plays a game of 20 or more. They've now got five in this first half to the Wolfpack. And, and 10's been a problem for, for Carolina. And we've got a timeout asked for and taken. Almost Timeouts. four minutes into the North second Carolina quarter State. in Raleigh. Their first, 30 seconds. Welcome back to Raleigh. After that last NC State touchdown, I watched co-defensive coordinator Charlton Warren on the sideline with his defense, and he was saying to them, for whatever reason, we're not in sync. He looked at DJ Jones, who is in tonight for the injured Eliza Huzzy, and he told him to calm down. Then after a long teaching lesson, he then finished with the message, take a breath, do your job. And after that big play to Casey Concepcion, I know he probably relayed that message once again in that huddle, guys. Taylor, thanks. Concepcion is okay. There's Chiz. Up top here tonight, Charlton Warren on the field with Tommy Thigpen. NC State and Armstrong to his left shoots it again for the freshman who cannot hang on inside the five. And it looked like Don Chapman was there in coverage. Concepcion, as we went to the break a moment ago, was kind of motioning something with his eyes. To the NC State bench, but appeared okay and obviously was. He was on the field he for the snap. Back in, and, and once again, Robert and I putting him in a quad set at the top of the screen, then shifting, and then bringing him across the formation to try to get him the football, probably just in anticipation that Gene Chizik is going to do something to put more eyeballs on KC Concepcion. That's Raphael going to the boundary at the right. Here's Armstrong. Pocket collapses. Here he goes straight ahead. He'll slide inside the five. They're going to call it the six. It'll be third down and about four from there, I think, Tim, on the six yard run. Yeah, and I think that just seeing a couple runs tonight, this being one of them, it's a great play call. It's quarterback draw. There's no one there. He puts himself down. And I think that between the way he did not finish a run earlier and that right there. I wonder if Brennan Armstrong is a little banged up coming into this football game. Yeah, good point. Well, remember last week at the tail end at Virginia Tech, he took a big lick yeah, in and Blacksburg. I, and I would say, you know, he typically runs like a fullback, Wes. Yeah. And so that's been somewhat surprising and certainly something to keep an eye on. Yep. It was a question among the Wolfpack faithful this week for sure. And now a timeout will be taken by Dave Dora. So while the Wolfpack and Tar Heels talk it over at their respective bench, don't forget college hoops 
right around the corner in the ACC SEC challenge for both the men and women. You'll see men's action Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Dan Bonner and I'll be in Atlanta for Georgia Tech and number 25, Mississippi State. And also Wednesday, 9 15, Georgia visits Florida State to see their third ACC opponent in the last six games for the Bulldog. All that coverage on ACC Network and all the ESPN family of networks for the ACC SEC Challenge. After 20 odd years of the ACC Big Ten Challenge, looking forward to seeing what the ACC SEC Challenge looks like this year. Here in Raleigh, out of the Wolfpack timeout, here goes the here goes the Robert and I toy box again. Carolina's got to try and get lined up here. Concepcion in motion, slipped. Here's Armstrong to the freshman touchdown. You see, it's a unique formation. You get the offensive line split out to the right. And so now there's some confusion just talking it through. Look at Travis Shaw, who's up at the top. He falls down, I think, trying to say, hey, essentially get the game to stop for an injury. But by that point, it was too late. Carolina had snapped the football. Narvison's point is good. Well, the battery of Armstrong and Concepcion in the span of about three minutes has put two touchdowns on the board and NC State is well in front with 10 minutes to play in the first half at 20 to nothing. Well, Concepcion he nearly loses his footing, but it's Brennan Armstrong being able to get all of that organized and then get the ball snapped before Travis Shaw could go down to get the officials to stop the game for an injury. And let's say this, Robert and I deserves a ton of credit yep. for how he has designed a plan tonight to get that young fellow the football as much as possible. Well, it's been remarkable. And it adds to a trend where NC State had scored 35% of its points in the second quarter this year. And now they have outscored opponents 113 to 58 in the second quarter. And this particular night, it's two touchdown passes from Armstrong to Casey Concepcion. And I know the ballots are due tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock for the Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tim. It's going to be hard not to write number 10's name down there. To me, and Will Hardy just got blasted on the kick return. Wow. So the Wolfpack forces the Tar Heels to start right around their 10, Tyler. Yeah, guys, Casey Concepcion, as you mentioned, has had an incredible season. Came into tonight in FBS top five for receptions, yards, and touchdowns for all of freshmen. I asked him, did you know the last player who won ACC Rookie of the Year? Because there's potential for that. He didn't know. And by the way, it was Russell Wilson back in 2008. He said, you know what's crazy? He's my favorite quarterback, always has been since his Seahawks days. I asked KC what it would mean to him to win. He said, for my family to win it, it would be everything because this this is what I've been working so hard for my entire life. Wow. What? He's got my vote. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Because he's been remarkable. I mean, he's a freshman wide receiver that's playing in the backfield, running between the tackles. I mean, yep. he's been incredible. Hampton got a yard. May going to hand it to Amarian again. And... Carolina just going to ground here. They picked up about three and two carries. Devon Betty to stop. Hampton has 27 yards. He comes in averaging almost 129 a game. He was tied with Ollie Gordon of Oklahoma State when the weekend started for tops in the nation at 1,414 yards. Carolina 0 for 4 on third down. May shoots it to Walker offline incomplete and took a shot from Aiden White. And 
how about this Wolfpack defense? Because yep. they are flying around. They're winning on early downs. They are forcing third and longs. And Carolina's trying to get Tez Walker on a little under route with a pick. You see, just run through traffic. But Aiden White does a great job of just going over the top of it, playing downhill. And then because the ball's thrown a little too far out in front by Drake May, it's another three and out. Toy to wait on the punt from McGinnis. Fourth three and out in five possessions for Carolina. Here's Coit at the 46, and Chapman tracks him down. Nice play by the young freshman. That brings us to tonight's edition of Food Lions Food for Thought. And Tim. Drake May is one for seven for three yards. Well, we knew that he had had his struggles against this defense, but tonight's been something else because he's already had a turnover. He's had a hard time finding completions. He's had a couple of plays where the ball gets snapped when he's not ready for it, and it's been a disaster for Carolina offensively. First down, shot to Lassane off the arm of Armstrong. Right at about 17 yards, I think, or so for NC State on the play to the 39 of Carolina. And the Wolfpack right back at it on offense again. When you start looking at kind of what Dave Doran said, we need to possess the ball. We need to stress the rules of Carolina's defense. We need to hit explosives. Check, check, check and check. check. Toss in front. This is Concepcion trying to find a crease. Cannot. Got two yards on the. It is a pass statistically. Because Armstrong threw it in front. And it's the easiest pass you quarterbacks ever make. And KC might have been shaken up on that play. Well, you know, it's kind of remarkable that you know, he's able to battle through these games. And we've done a number of their games, Wes, where he's touching the football a lot. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing to play a bunch of snaps, it's another thing to. Touch the ball nearly every play. Concepcion did go to his knees when he reached the bench area a moment ago. So Porter Rooks in motion there. And here's Armstrong looking to make a throw downfield. It's caught. And Keon Lassane inside the 20, thrown back by Don Chapman. It's a great throw by Brennan Armstrong. You know, don't forget, Brennan Armstrong had a period there in Virginia where he was throwing it all over the yard. This is not a guy. That's not a good passer. He's been a very good passer in this league. And that was a beautiful throw there. Up over Cayman Rucker's hands, but dropping it down to the receivers before the secondary can get into the area to make a play. Concepcion to the medical tent. Armstrong's 11 of 15 for 185 and two scores. One more time. Crossing route, this is Porter Rooks. Tackled around the 10 yard line by DJ Jones. And Rooks with another catch in this first half. Here's another look at Concepcion. Cedric Gray, the tackle there with Bo Atkinson for Carolina. And, you know, that's the play typically, you know, you get. Kind of AC joint separations, broken collarbones is when the weight of a defender going down on top of your body, right, you know, driving your shoulder into the ground. See Mims now in the backfield with Armstrong. Second down, Armstrong toward the end zone, and that's batted away. Armani Chapman got a hand in on a ball for Keon Lassane. And without Huzzy, Chapman probably is their next best corner. Made a lot of plays this year, kind of played his way into the lineup and it doesn't have any help action very similar to the action on the touchdown but it was a nice job of playing that one getting his hand in there. NC State who came into the ball game eighth in the ACC at 39 percent on third down they're only 32 percent in the league is four for six tonight. Here's Armstrong on another third down try. Shoots it toward the end zone, but really throwing it just out of bounds. He had Rooks and Lassane kind of hanging out, and Power Eccles back on the field was forcing Armstrong to the near side. And here's Narvison to see if he can add another point. We get a look at Concepcion, who's out of the medical tent, and 
I guess that's a good sign. That's a great sign for NC State, and it's a good sign to see Brennan Armstrong make a good decision, understanding the situation. Here's Narvison now, right at 28 yards. And the kick is good. NC State adds another field goal. 23 to nothing on a Saturday night in Raleigh. Tough night at the office so far for Drake May, Tim. I mean, beyond tough. Yeah. For a guy who I think is widely regarded as one of the top quarterbacks in the country, if not the top, he's won a seven tonight for three yards. Yeah. And he's got a turnover running the football. This has been an amazing effort by Tony Gibson's defense to shut down one of the more explosive offenses in all of college football. Colin Smith will kick it away. Chapman, the freshman, Doc Chapman, and Will Hardy are deep, and Hardy will just signal for the fair catch. Carolina will get it at its 25, trailing now 23 to nothing. Don't forget, next weekend is championship weekend. ACC Network has wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Cards and Seminoles from Charlotte. Friday, ACC huddle at 3 p.m. Friday hours for the group. 4 o'clock ACC PM, Pack and Taylor in Uptown Charlotte. Saturday, 6 o'clock huddle, 8 o'clock Championship Command Center broadcast. And at 11.30 ACC huddle post game and Florida State leading Florida. At Steve Spurrier Frill at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium tonight in Gainesville. May and the Tar Heels from the pocket, loops it for Jones who makes the catch. And Carolina's going to have their first snap in plus territory after the throw over the top of Bishop Fitzgerald to J.J. Jones. And they need a bunch combination. They run a corner route. Simple concept, and it's well read by Drake May and good ball thrown. And here is Jones again. J.J. Jones trying to put a little energy in the Tar Heel attack after the 30-yard catch. And Shaheen Battle slows him down for another 10-yard play. And pace is definitely something that Carolina wants to get to. May pumps. Now wants to run with it and has some real estate. Out of bounds at the 20. That's another first down, about 15 yards there, Tim. 15 yards there. The challenge on quarterback runs, it's harder to go as fast when the quarterback sprints to the far sideline, but Carolina still trying to get to it. And that time, Davin Van just launched right on through between Corey Gaynor and Willie Lampkin, I think. Offside, defense <laughs> number one, five-yard penalty, it's first down. If you're going to go, go all the way, right? Well, don't give him a free play, he makes contact, and Drake was hoping for the free play. Yep. So Van comes to the sideline, Carolina on a first and five. Play clock down to eight for May. He's got Hampton with him. Walker to the bottom of the screen. Going left. Throws end zone. Copenhaver caught it. Touchdown, Carolina. Best possession for Mac Brown's team by a long shot. Well, for all the struggles that we saw Drake may have. That was a pretty impressive drive. Good throw on the corner route, the scramble, and then this is a ridiculous throw. He's trying to get Nesbitt in the flat, doesn't like it, and moving to his left, that's a really difficult throw to Copenhaver. Kind of one he missed moving to his left to Tez Walker early in the football game. But that was a big time throw. Four plays, 75 yards in 123. And Wes, that's the key. Scoring quickly after you've dug yourself into a huge hole. And here's Burnett. Another Raleigh product to add the point. And Carolina's on the board. Tim, again, let's go back here. And, because there's some things that now you're seeing from him that are next level, right? Yeah, I mean, this is absurd. There are not many guys that can do that there. Sprinting to your left, you're looking to get the flat. So now you got to get yourself organized to throw a guy breaking to the corner down the field. 
you see the arm strength and the accuracy. And here we go saying, hey, this guy's one of seven for three yards. And he says, all right, how about I go three for three for 55 and a touchdown? Yeah, Carolina's first five drives, they had under 50 yards of offense. 75 there and four snaps. And an important drive and an important score for Mac Brown's night. For sure. I mean, it felt like this game was completely getting away from them, and they needed that. So now, NC State, knowing they'll get the kick to start the second half, and Keon Lassane is deep here. And here's Lassane off the goal line. Out to the 20 and near the 25, where NC State's going to get started. Don't forget, Huddle is with us here in live in Raleigh. They'll be along at the half, and don't forget, Huddle after dark. Post game coming up with Kelsey and EJ, Eric McLean, Coach Rick, Eddie Royal. Tonight here from Raleigh, guest analysis highlights, good conversation, and a portable heater, I'm guessing, somewhere along the way. So here, here's State off its 24, and I think the heat will be turned on at halftime. <laughs> Chilly night in Raleigh. This is Raphael picking up right at about five on first down. I was talking to Tim Peeler, who is a historian of sorts with NC State athletics, in particular football. Said tonight had a chance to be the coldest game in the history of Carter Finley Stadium from a temperature standpoint. Feels like it to me in the booth, not going to lie. Because <laughs> the window's up. Feel the game. Second down now for the pack. Six to a first down. You see Mitchell, the tight end, in motion. Here's Armstrong. Pump fake. Now going to sail it back near side, and Rosner reached for it. He's ruled out of bounds. Marcus Allen was there playing the corner for Carolina. Desmond Evans, I think, got confused that he was near a quarterback. And I think this may be a catch, Wes. Ooh. I think that he it was kind of awkward because he was really wasn't moving much. It was under further review. But that, that left toe is down. That ball is caught. It's near the 48-yard line of NC State. Now remember, every play in the ACC is reviewed. Yeah, and that to me, I see grass kind of coming up. As long as he holds on to this football, which I believe he does, it's a really interesting look in the pocket. I think he catches that cleanly right away. And I think that the, his left toe remains on the ground. Yep. That's a catch. It's strange because Desmond Evans was in the backfield. I think he thought the ball was already thrown. And it was his back touching Brennan Armstrong as he made that throw to the sideline. You can see a little bit of turf come up on the trail foot of Rosner. And I would say this, you know, Brennan Armstrong did not pass the ball well early in the season. Right. He just didn't. Missed throws. He turned it over. But I felt like that was a departure from really who he's been as a football player in the ACC. And Dave Dorn told us something interesting that when Armstrong came back as the starter, Tim, he, he told him, he said, Coach, I just have to play the game, not worry about winning the game. Yeah. And, and God, I mean, the foresight, number one, of Peyton Wilson in the clip we ran earlier, but Armstrong, to go through that, Tim, I mean, and look, you, you've been through it. You know it's not easy. It's not easy. And I think the way that Dave Dorn kind of loved on him during the process has helped get them to this point right here where they have a quarterback who was benched who's now playing his best football of the season. Adam Savoie. After further review, the receiver caught the ball at the 48-yard line. It will be first and 10 at that spot. So it will be a first and 10 on the Rosner catch. And now with 3.43 to go, and NC State looking at a potential double dip, a score going in and getting the ball to start the half. And the pack offense is over 275 yards after the grab there here in the opening frame. Here's Lassane working off a block. 
And I think that was Penix who tried to help him across midfield with the hedge and did. And Armstrong's 2 11 now passing in two scores. Marcus Allen and Stick Lane shoved Lassane out of bounds. And I think how you manage this situation, you talked about the double dip, Wes, but I think Dave Doran, knowing how explosive this Carolina offense is, is, being smart about how you operate on this drive in terms of how much time is left in the half when Carolina gets the football back. And a timeout here, I believe, was taken. So NC State will use the timeout. Just under three to go, and uh, let's check in with Kelsey. Wes and Tim, we'll see you at the half breaking down what's happening in all the rivalry games because there are some good ones right now, including, EJ, what we're seeing right now, especially from NC State. We just saw a really nice score by Drake May, but let's see if NC State can cap it off with either three points or seven going into half. Brennan Armstrong and these guys looking good so far. We'll see you guys right back up here at the half. And, yes, we do have heaters, Wes. <laughs> Tim? You know why? It's Eric McClain. I, everyone else was tough enough to Mac not have heaters. It was McClain. McClain? Is that what happened, huh? That's what I heard. I mean, yeah. that's the rumor. Okay. All right. Speculation then on our part. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so they're coming up at the half. Here's Brennan Armstrong making his fourth start tonight, fifth appearance against Carolina. 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. Mm. Concepcion in motion, going to hand the ball. No, Armstrong's going to keep it. Oh, almost had it knocked away by Eccles, and he had to re kind of grab it. As power Eccles tried to swipe it out of there. Well, it came out. Look at this. I mean, Power Eccles gets his hands on it, and that thing is almost gone. That's Ooh. a good job of Armstrong squeezing it and then regaining possession. Power Eccles, who played at Chambers High School in Charlotte, which is where Casey Concepcion also hails from in the Queen City. And I think we're going to, you know, potentially. Now, I thought we would see somebody under center here with it being third and less than a yard. Yep. Third and short, and here's Mims. He's the short yardage back. And he got a long yardage there. Delbert Mims out of Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis. Well, they get good movement up front. It's an inside zone run play. They get work some double teams here. Good cutback, and then just lower your pads. If you're Delbert Mims there and finish the run, which is exactly what he does, it's an impressive conversion. State five of eight on third downs now in this first half. Concepcion. Here's Armstrong. Little play fake. Tried to dump it down on the cross and Penix. And an incomplete pass will make it second down. Taylor? Delbert Mims might be one of my favorite recruiting stories. Dave Dorn told us. He said a few years ago on the recruiting cha trail, he was sitting in a hotel eating breakfast, saw a coach from Ohio University. They talked. Coach Dorn mentioned, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a running back. And the coach from Ohio said, hey, there's a guy in Indianapolis you should check out. Turns out it was Delbert Mims. He looked him up online, saw the video, ended up offering him. The rest is history. Here's Delbert Mims tonight, guys. Got to be careful where you have breakfast. <laughs> Here's Armstrong from the pocket again, able to step through and slide down. And they're going to measure to the 27. And Tim, to your point a moment ago, typically Brennan Armstrong would have dropped a shot. Yeah, he, he finishing the runs. And so I, I think he may be a little banged up. It's not affecting how he's playing. But now I think the clock becomes a bit of a story here for NC State if you can pick up the first down. Around the corner. Raphael will pick up the first down. Dave Doran now as it balls up to about a minute to go. Yeah, and you, you got to be careful if you're NC State because you've used your timeouts. Yep. So because you've used your timeouts, you've pretty much taken the run game out of it. And if you're Brendan Armstrong, you probably need to be working the sideline. Armstrong throws. That's caught. That's Dakari Collins inside the five. That's another first down. That will stop the clock. And Marcus Allen, the defender, the defensive back on the play in coverage, he slips and falls as Collins pulls that reception in. Well, just simple hitch thrown outside, and Collins, excuse me, Allen slips and falls. Here's Armstrong, tried to go to Concepcion, who had turned lane around. 
And so it now with 42 seconds will be second and goal at the four. Okay, so now the run game is now back in the equation. You can run the football here on second down with 42 seconds. Now you're conceding probably at least 25 seconds if you do so if you're tackled in play. Not the end of the world because on third down you're probably throwing the football. You don't get it. You're kicking the field goal. Seven different guys have caught passes from Armstrong here in the first half. Second and goal. Pack to throw. Armstrong up in the pocket and gets to the two and down he goes. Now the clock with 31 seconds and moving. But you're okay time wise here. You don't need to be in any rush. Nothing frantic. You have plenty of time. 20 seconds still left on the clock. Get set. Here's a lob for Collins and we got a flag on the play in the end zone and we had a whistle before that because I think Mac Brown might have burned a timeout yeah. here. So Carolina's trying to substitute Mac Brown needed to burn a timeout so he didn't get caught with 12 men on the field. Yep. And I think Carolina's going to get the timeout. Prior to the snap timeout North Carolina their first. So this is what Mac Brown sees. He sees he's got one of his defensive linemen trying to get off of the field. It looks like it's Desmond Evans. He's about at the 10 yard line now. Mac Brown runs down to the officials. See him at the very top of the screen calling the timeout. And it's a good decision by Mac Brown. So meanwhile, Robert and I can dive into his catalog here well and, and Wes it's a great point because part of what can happen usually when you get these unique formations one like we saw on the Concepcion touchdown earlier with the offensive linemen lined up outside yeah. by the numbers those are typically long play calls so, you know play calls that you would like to discuss in the huddle to kind of remind everybody that timeout allows you to make a call like that can you run it here Tim I, I would not because 18 seconds is usually what you need on a May Day field goal. That's too close for comfort for me. Armstrong to throw. End zone shot caught. Concepcion. But he's not in now, so he's, he's got a May Day field gotta, goal, and you got to fly to do it. And here they go. State's got to get lined up. Play clock down to seven, six, five, four, three. Snap. Narvison kick with one. It's good. The fire drill works for the Wolfpack. You rarely get to see it, but NC State just executed it. They executed it, and they executed it with a wide receiver still on the field. Porter Rooks, Wes, was lined up as a wide receiver to the top of the screen. It's a completion to Concepcion. It's a great tackle by Lane at the goal line he's not in now you're in a mayday situation it's a great job of Concepcion of getting the ball back to the official in the middle of the field and then getting off the field and then basically flying everybody on that's well executed Taylor with Dave Doran coach how about that execution to end the half going in 26-7 up on the heels mayday field goal yeah we practice it all the time. You don't really use it on the one yard line like that, but I'm proud of the guys for getting it in. Brendan Armstrong's been through so much, but a heck of a performance in the first half. How would you evaluate what he's done offensively? Yeah, he's doing a great job. You know, I mean, obviously he's playing a little banged up, tough as nails. The kids are playing hard for him. It's a heck of a half. This is going to be as long as it takes to win this game. They're a prideful team. This is going to be a four quarter game or more. What needs to continue to finish it? You know, just don't give them big plays. We've got to control their tempo with our defense and then stay on the field. The turnover margin will tell the story at the end. Thanks, Coach. All right. Well, they call it May Day field goal for a reason, right, Tim? And NC State executed it perfectly. Narvison's 18 yard field goal and the Wolfpack in front. And here's Kelsey Riggs. Durham, thanks so much. Welcome into this ACC Network halftime report. And how about that quick finish there from NC State? Going into the locker room pretty happy with the 26 to 7 lead in this rivalry matchup over North Carolina. Our thoughts on that coming up in just a little bit. But right now, we got to take you through what's happening around the ACC because we've got a massive game with number five, Florida State, and Florida going head to head. EJ, Eddie, Emac with me. Yep. And you see Mike Norvell oh, trying to get. Oh, 
guys going. Love it. Trouble. Terrible. Terrible. It's a terrible, terrible call. Terrible call. This is an absolutely horrible call. And these are ACC refs, which make me even more upset. They're supposed to be looking out, right? Right. So unnecessary roughness is the call, and then EJ, this is the response. Yeah, this is tough. I mean, look, this is a misdirection play right here. They got a gas Hit him, backside coach. A. Coach Norvell getting after it. Florida cashes in, but Mike Norvell's crew trying to answer Tate Rodemaker. How about that, Eddie? Yeah, Johnny Wilson coming up big, making some tough catches today. Way to keep your feet in bounds. Next play, Trey Benson, Emac. Yeah, you love to see this. I need to see more of it, actually. Run the football with Trey Benson. You guys said you wanted to see that for them to get it going. Well, in the second half, third quarter, uh. you get a little bit more Trey Benson all the way, EJ. Right on cue, Big E. And then, look, like I said, Threes at Florida State, all the Nick plays. There you go, Trey Benson. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Florida kicks a field goal. So they have the 15 to 14 lead right now. Looks like with about a minute to go in the third quarter. But EJ, you guys talked about what you needed to see early. You needed them to take care of the ball deep. I mean, to do big things defensively, take care of the ball offensively and special teams. It's been a slow start. Why? Yeah. It has been a slow start. And part of it, I think, is just the inexperience of Tate Rodemaker. But we expected it coming into this game. Maybe try to take some shots. They haven't really done anything vertically as far as just one-on-one -on -one matchups with yeah. Keon Comey. He's hit some seams. He's hit some nice passes. I think right now, continue to take care of the football, run the football. Because yeah. really what Florida did was, which was a good job of running the ball, yeah. keeping time of possession in their favor early in the game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And again, when you have a young guy, a young quarterback that's learning on the job on the fly, and, and I get from an age perspective, but he's inexperienced, right, at the end of the day. He's in the swamp. This is one of the hardest Tough. atmospheres in college football. So help him out, run the football a little bit more, get it to your great running back there and let the offensive line do work. Yeah, the slow start is due to not being able to run the ball early. Trey Benson got it rolling later on in that in that half, but to start the game off, they didn't start with a good flow. A couple three and outs. It wasn't great flow for that offense. And then the defense has got to play better as well. I want to see some more stops from this defense. You don't want Tate trying to do too much, but get Keon Coleman the ball. Yeah. I mean, you saw the one chance that he had, he made a play with it. Continue to get him the ball. It doesn't have to be down the field. Get him a quick screen. Just get the ball in his hands. Florida State with only 57 rushing yards at this point in the game. Trey Benson has 51 of those, and one of those came on a 36-yard touchdown. So we'll see if they're able to run the ball any better right now. They are trailing by three with about a minute to go in the third. How about Georgia and Georgia Tech? Number one team in the country coming to Atlanta, and Haynes King, what would he do? Well, come right out the gate and score a touchdown. Yeah, Haynes showing what he does best. Sometimes that's using his legs, and he does it right there. But Emac Georgia has an answer right back. Kendall Milton. Yeah, they're going to run the football. Very physical team up front, but I'll tell you what the difference is, is their passing ability. Final two minutes of the second quarter. Right Carson here. Carson Beck to Oscar mm -hmm. Dell. Great pass right here across the middle. This tight end has been playing great all season long in spite of uh, Brock Bowers. So many weapons for this team. Dewan Edwards there with a three-yard touchdown. A Bulldogs up 21-13 to 13 in the third quarter just starting, but Georgia Tech trying to stay in it. How about Clemson, number 24 in the country on the road at South Carolina in-state bragging rights on the raw line in this one. Second play of the game. A lot of bragging rights here. Yeah, Khalil Barnes here. Just a great heads-up play. That ball went backwards. He scoops and scores. Everybody else just kind of stops. He takes it to the house. Amazing play by the young freshman. So they jump out to a 7-0 lead. Then midway through the first quarter, same score, fourth and goal. Luke ah. Doty takes it in, and the game is tied at seven apiece. So that home crowd likes it, but don't worry, because Clemson kicker Jonathan White steps up big for them and knocks that one through the uprights. He's been big in the first half so far. 16-7 to Clemson right now with the lead over South Carolina EMAC in a hostile environment on the road, and they're taking care of business. Yeah, they really are. You need to see a little bit more from the offense, especially just from a consistency basis. Now, they're yeah. kicking field goals. Praise the Lord, making field goals. It's great to see. Uh, but just a couple more conversions, getting those passes, catching the ball for your quarterback, but also, okay, just calm down. Yeah. Take the plays that are there because they are. Yeah, I think, again, keep leading with the defense. Keep getting the stops. You've only given up seven points at this point. Don't allow anything free for South Carolina in the second half. Yeah, get some easy completions. I want to see that passing game get going. The runs games, it's okay. And, and get Sh Shipley in space, some easy throws. Like, there are a couple of screen passes. I want to see Kate get rolling in the second half. We'll keep an eye on all three of these rivalry games that are going on right now and update you if we have anything here at the half. Meanwhile, we had two other rivalry games that are already in the books from earlier today. It was a couple of good 
good ones between Virginia Tech, Virginia, and Kentucky, and Louisville. And a good one here at Carter Finley Stadium so far. NC State up 26 to 7 at the break. More from the ACC huddle after this. Welcome back into this ACC Network halftime report. Rivalry matchups all around. How about what we saw between Kentucky and Louisville? Started off a little bit chippy, but we take it to the fourth quarter because there's a lot of action coming here. Louisville down Jack Plummer to Amari Huggins. Bruce for the touchdown, EJ. Yeah, this is a really nice job. Being creative in the pocket, allowing your receiver to uncover. Big time in the red zone for a touchdown. Emac, Kentucky has a guy named Ray Davis, and no matter how many times he scored, they had no answer. Yeah, if you don't know, now you know. This young man has burst, quickness, and does not go down easily. Great touchdown right here to give Kentucky the lead. With a minute left in the game, it's a seven-point lead. So what can Jack Plummer do? do well a last chance here yeah i mean he gave his receiver a chance right here it looked like pi right there a little push the back, by the defense the back. Yeah. unfortunately the refs missed that one kentucky takes down number 10 louisville 38 to 31 the final also virginia tech Talk and virginia out. how about that most points ever scored by one team in this game in series history 55 to 17 the final as the Hokies are going bowling yeah they are Meanwhile, KC Concepcion, speaking of guys that teams have no answer for, one of his two touchdowns so far in the first half. It's a 26 to seven lead. We'll break down this game after this. Welcome back into this ACC Network halftime report. We've got a good one here in this rivalry matchup between NC State and North Carolina, 26 to seven lead for the Wolfpack at the break. And this offense has gotten off to a hot start and the defense has been pretty good too. Yeah, I'm, I'm more impressed with the defense. I mean, both sides are great, but the defense <laughs> is playing great. I mean, I never thought that I have to say that Drake May has to play better. He needs to calm down and throw the ball more accurately, but Aiden White's making it tough on Tez Walker. Tony Gibson's calling a great game, getting pressure, just all around great job by NC State. Yeah, no, this defense is playing out of their minds. I mean, before that last drive, that touchdown drive by Carolina there, they held him to three yards yep. pretty much the entire half. That's insane. Yeah, look, the stats I see, Carolina 0 for 5 on third down, NC State 6 of 10. That's the difference in the game. Let's see if yeah. Carolina can flip that. Yeah. We'll see, and we will have full reaction for you tonight on the ACC Huddle. Full hour-long breakdown of what happened here, what happened elsewhere, and the rest of the rivalries as well, and we'll be joined joined by the winning team. Maybe Santa will join us as well. Tell us what we're all getting for Christmas. ACC Huddle Puss game with you afterwards. Let's go see what's Well, we welcome you back. We're getting ready for the second half in Raleigh. And you know with State Carolina, there are always dramatics. Well, apparently the end of the first half is our first installation of dramatics tonight because NC State kicked the field goal with 12 men on the field. Braden Narvison hit the 18-yard field goal on the final play of the half. Now, this is what led to it, Tim. So here's the deal. Here's the catch by Concepcion. Every play in the ACC is reviewed, but I, I would have thought that they maybe would have needed to take more time to look at it, how close it was. Then they made a field goal it because it was down short of the goal line. Well, you see Porter Rooks at the top of the screen, 12 players on the field. Well, that was the field goal, no flags thrown. It's good, that ends the half, right? We think, here's Adam Savoy to tell us what the uh, resolve is. Replay has reviewed the previous play and determined there were 12 offensive players on the field at the snap, which is a foul for illegal substitution by the offense. That's a five yard penalty. We'll replay fourth down and NC State did not make the successful field goal. So the kick has been taken off the board. Zero. So here is Narvison to try a field goal and Mac Brown. And Braden Narvison's essentially going to try about a 23 yard field goal. On the final play of the first half after we've had halftime. And I'm not really sure why it's on time. And the kick is good. So Braden Narvison 
turns an 18 yard field goal to a 23 yard field goal. And if you're just coming back to join us to start the second half with Tim Hasselback, West Durham, we've seen a field goal for the second time to make it 26 to 7 NC State. In the second half, or half, but after halftime, but it. it happened in the first half. That's it. One of the strangest finishes to a halftime I think I've ever seen. But the bigger story probably is the way that Carolina has been dominated in this football game. Yeah. NC State has had their way offensively, scored on every offensive possession in the first half. And it's been incredible because Brennan Armstrong has been really good throwing the football. And then it's been Casey Concepcion who has touched the football a lot tonight. You see it, you know, been targeted nine times, six catches, 86 yards, He's got the two scores. He's had a number of carries as well, and that was the plan offensively, and NC State has been able to execute it. So, in one of the rare exchanges, we're going to see a field goal by one team, and then that team is going to take the kick. I'm, there's a few things that are, for me that are, are hard to digest on this. Is One, that the game wasn't stopped. You know, we know that the, the play with Concepcion was at the goal line and because there was roughly 19 seconds left evidently it was reviewed fast enough so that the Mayday field goal was able to get the kickoff but then that play needs to be reviewed there's 12 men on the field I think at that point it needs to be addressed not after halftime the kick by Boyd will go into the end zone so NC State's going to start from its 25 Taylor yeah guys Mac Brown absolutely not sugarcoating things coming out of halftime he said that was maybe the worst half ever by a football team that I've coached in my career he said look the second half we have to completely start this thing over we have to play better and he put it on them as well we have to coach better guys he was also very upset about the officiating there late in the first half with that field goal and I mentioned I talked to Dave Dorn heading off the field he talked about Brendan Armstrong playing a little injured you guys had been saying that in the first half hasn't seemed to bother him so we'll continue to keep an eye on it guys pistol for Armstrong with Concepcion who gets the carry to the right side and we'll pick up eight almost nine on first down DJ Jones playing for the injured Elijah Hussey in the Carolina secondary shoves him out of bounds and a continuation in the second half here with what we saw in the first half in the backfield Concepcion and they hand it to hand it to him on an outside stretch play picks up eight yards NC State saw Carolina possess the ball or NC State had the ball 22 minutes and 17 seconds Tim of that first half. Here is Armstrong shooting it across the field Keon Lassane the catch he'll slip down shy of midfield at the 49 another Wolfpack first down. A good play design it's just a move the pocket play play action boot get Armstrong on the move left handed quarterback moving left good accurate throw to Lassane. Yep and all of a sudden the Wolfpack doesn't look like it's missed a beat does it. From the first half. They scored on all six, technically, of their first half possessions now that we've had the rewrite on the field goal. Mims in the backfield here with Armstrong. That's Rooks in motion. And the big back, Delbert Mims, is pulled down by Cayman Rucker. Grabbed him by the waist and slung him down for a loss of one, did the butcher. Wolfpack seemed pretty content to just huddle along, hold the football, and keep it away from the Tar Heels as much as possible. Snapped Armstrong. Quick throw, near side. This is Collins, the Clemson transfer. And Dakari Collins brought down by Marcus Allen. It'll be a first down to the Carolina 40 on a 13 yard throw. Similar play that we saw towards the end of the second half. And it's just a hitch route by Collins. And once again, being guarded by Marcus Allen. And watch Allen at the top. Footing has been a huge issue tonight for Carolina. Yep. So a first down here for NC State. Concepcion in the barrel of the pistol with Armstrong. And here's the give to the freshman. Working to the right side. He'll turn the corner. He's got 10, 15, 
about 18 yards on first down. Marcus Allen, the tackle of Kevin Concepcion. And how about the offensive line for NC State? Just everybody, just look at the movement that these guys get. Outside zone, look at the uh, Concepcion's four yards past the line of scrimmage before he really makes a cut. You know, and this is not an offensive line that, you know, has had a year, you know, that you typically see out of some of these NC State offensive lines. They've kind of struggled right there, not so much. First and 10 outside the 21. Mims spinning away and runs right into Don Chapman, the senior safety, who's down in the box for the Tar Heels. So second down coming up, and the Wolfpack is closing in on 400 yards of total offense here early in the third. You see Mitchell come in. He's a tight end. They're changing the packaging as Concepcion comes back as well, along with uh, Raphael, I think. There's Mitchell. Walk on tight end from Concord, North Carolina. And here's Concepcion with the inverted wishbone. Low snap from McMahon. And KC can't get going that time. Cedric Gray makes the stop. Third and long next for the Wolfpack. You know, and you wonder if there's something else off of that, Wes. It's the second time we've seen that look where Concepcion starts under center. Armstrong and shotgun, they motion Armstrong out. Concepcion kind of takes the snap with that look in the backfield, and you have to think that there's maybe something coming off of that with Brennan Armstrong later. He has thrown for a score, has KC. Armstrong on the third and long play. Lob for the end zone. Collins there. Caught it. Dakari Collins and an NC State touchdown. This is some kind of throw and catch here. It is. One of the criticisms of Brendan Armstrong early in the season is the ball wasn't being spread around to different playmakers. But tonight, we've seen a number of guys come up with big catches. This time, it was Dakari Collins' turn. Narvison for the point after. Seven possessions, seven scores for NC State tonight. The kick is good. Brennan Armstrong sees it. You got an all out pressure, pressure inside, and then man across the board will take your shot, your best matchup. He chooses the press coverage at the bottom of the screen and throws an absolute strike. As the Wolfpack continue to put points on the board. Well, NC State 33, Carolina 7. Seven possessions and seven scores tonight for the Wolfpack. And Hardy will signal for the fair catch. And Carolina will start from its 25. And the Tar Heel offense has had one bright shining moment and that was a four play 75 yard drive in the waning stages of quarter two but outside of that been a hard night and the NC State defense has had a lot to do with it. Carolina has 123 yards of offense they come in averaging 514 first in the ACC and third national Jones a diving catch out at the 31 for a pickup of six. And J.J. Jones has been the highlight receiver for Carolina. Three catches, 46 yards. Marion Hampton can't get going. The run pursuit tonight by the Red Shirts has been terrific, Tim, and that's Peyton Wilson there. I mean, it's they just haven't been able to run the football at all. Yep. You know, I think, and that's prevented Carolina from getting first downs, which has prevented them from trying to get into some type of tempo and go fast because you need to pick up the first first down. 
NC State's allowed 89 yards a game in the last nine. Their total number 102 and a half. Third in the ACC, 16th nationally coming in. Tonight, Carolina's got just 63 yards after that, and here goes May taking off. Flag thrown behind the play. Drake May breaks free. 30, 25, 20, and he'll ease out of bounds ahead of Aiden White around the 15, but this may be coming back. It is coming back for a hold. I think they're going to get Willie Lampkin. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face. Defense number one. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Davin Van. Hands to the face, and meanwhile, Drake May takes off. Wow, it was interesting. And that's a good call there. You see the hand up on Spencer Rollin. I thought inside, look at Willie Lampkin. It actually looks like C.J. Clark maybe just slips and falls, and Lampkin just lays on top of him. It's a 50, big break for Carolina. 56-yard run by May. Add the penalty to it. Throws for Copenhaver. Incomplete on first down. Sean Brown. We have not called Brown's name tonight. And interesting because Chip Lindsey was talking about Brown and Wilson as kind of being the back-end keys of the 3-3-5 for Tony Gibson. I think part of the reason we haven't called their names is they've been on the field that much. Yeah, good point. Here's May on second down. He'll keep it to the left side. Drake inside the five to the one. Big lick from Boykin. It'll be third and goal. And I think 33 to seven, I think you got to go for it. I think it's four down territory if you don't get it on third down here. Tar Heels right at the line. May going to dodge to the left and fall into the end zone. So Drake May's got his ninth rushing score of the year. And the Tar Heels take the opening possession of the second half and put some points on the board. And I think Carolina's going to go for two. Not sure what the chart says this early in the third quarter, but when you're down 20, just trying to chip away at it any way you can. Trail by 20, says go for one, the old school chart does. <laughs> Better carry this around for a long time to use it right now, Hasselbeck. And now we get Adam Savoie talking to Drake May, but over oh, the play clock. Reset to 25 for the two point try here. Snap to May. Wolfpack brings three. Pumps. Drake will run for the far pylon and score. There's a marker down. And now a flag is thrown after May spiked the ball, scoring on the two-point play. So I think we're going to get a hold on Copenhaver, and then I think we're going to get a foul on May for spiking the football. Mm -hmm. Which means I think we're going to look at your chart, Wes, and Mike Brown's going to kick the extra point. That's it. He's going to follow the card. Not go off script. So. so there are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding number 81, 10 yard penalty. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 10, his first of the game. That 15 yard penalty will also be enforced if we play the try. Also, we're going to back up. Burnett on the kick. So now all of a sudden you're going to have in the ballpark of a 48 yard extra point. Well, 30, 44 yard extra point. Changes your percentages a little. Burnett's hit a 48 yarder at Pitt. This is 44 for the point. And Burnett's kick is good. So Drake May, a 56 yard keeper, and then all of a sudden, a couple of yards here on the dive, and Carolina within 20.
Well, it's been all Wolfpack from the jump tonight here at Carter Finley and Raleigh. 33 to 14, our score. And we welcome you back to ACC Network Primetime, our regular season finale tonight, the 113th meeting all time between State and Carolina. And great to be with Tim Hasselbeck and Taylor Tannenbaum and Alex Farmartino is our producer, Bob Frateroli, our director, and can't say enough about the wonderful men and women that have been a part of our ACC Network Primetime crew this year. A real joy to work with these folks week in and week out to bring you Atlantic Coast Conference football. And no return for LaSane. Remember, Julian Gray, Tim, is out of the lineup for NC State tonight, and Gray is one of the premier kickoff returners in the country. In fact, Gray came into the ball game second in the ACC, seventh nationally, averaging about 28 yards of return. So special teams without Julian Gray tonight, not stemming the tide of what NC State's been doing, but of note for sure. So seven possessions, seven scores for Dave Doran's team as they take over at their 25. Mims will start with Armstrong on the series. Concepcion's in a slot to the top. And Armstrong to throw, hit as he does, loops it for KC, caught. 45-yard line, trying to make a move. He'll cross the field, and here he goes. 35-30, and fumbled the ball. Biggers knocked it loose, and Carolina fell on it at the 22, I believe, inbounds. It looked like Javari Ritzy fell on the football. Uh, we got a lot going on here. I think we're going to have roughing the passer, which is going to prevent this from being a turnover. Concepcion had it in plus territory near the 25 of Carolina, and he's hurt. It was an outstanding throw by Armstrong under pressure. I think they're going to call roughing the passer, I believe, on Atkinson. And then it was incredible hustle by Power Eccles to get down the field to punch the football out. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So, to your point, the fumble is a thing of the past now. No, great courage, you know, kind of standing in the pocket by Armstrong and getting the ball out to Concepcion. Boy, Mac Brown is really hot here with this call. And I got to be honest, unless they're saying he drove him into the ground, he, he's not leading with the crown of his helmet. His helmet is off to the side. It's his shoulder in the midsection. I don't believe that's roughing the passer. Ball will be at the 40-yard line. There's Bo Atkinson. And now we have whistle blow. We have a... The previous play is under further review. So now under review. We'll step aside at carter Finley Stadium back after this. All right, Tim, we got a stoppage of play here for a review, but it doesn't have to do with the roughing the passer. Right? No, roughing the passer is going to stay. That's not reviewable, but the ball that was fumbled goes out of bounds before it's possessed by Ritzy. So the ball is going to be. After further review, the offensive player fumbled the ball at the 30-yard line, which then went forward and out of bounds. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the 30-yard line with an automatic first down. So that's why you're reviewing it. Ritzy didn't possess it in bounds. Ritzy was touching out of bounds as he was trying to gather the football. So you're going to see the roughing at the beginning here, which I'm going to be honest, I don't think is roughing. But Concepcion catches the football. He takes off. When he fumbles this football at the 30-yard line and now is going forward, Ritzy tries to recover it, but he's touching out of bounds before he possesses it. So rather than the penalty being from the original line of scrimmage, it is now from the end of the play, which is Basically the 30-yard line where he fumbled plus 15 yards because of the roughing. And now Concepcion will draw up as the quarterback. And he will keep it left side. Trying to get a block here at the corner and out of bounds around the five. 
So it ends up being a 54 yard pass roughly less than 54 plus the 15 on the penalty. Because the ball was fumbled around the 30 and then the 15 yards fit nicely half the distance. And now all of a sudden it's second and short. It was a 45 yard pass and then it's so 60 yards total by the time you mark the penalty <laughs> off. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that who's on first. West, is that what you said? Concepcion's got 180, 176 yards of total offense so far. And here's the handoff to Mims. And the big fellow will drive into the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. Eight possessions, eight touchdowns. And Mims has been. The short yardage power back and now NC State. I don't know what your chart says, Wes, up 25, but they're going for two. My chart stops at 20. <laughs> 39 to 14. You know, nobody's got the card anymore. It's, it's on an iPad. You know, that's on some sort of tablet, right? Whatever it is, I think it's going to be something. Creative as we see Porter Rooks kind of hiding in the hip of the right tackle. Yep. Armstrong in the two point try after the Mims touchdown. Brennan to the end zone and incomplete there. Trying to get it to Juice Vereen. But Mims nonetheless gets the score. And it's his eighth rushing score of the year. It's a really nice cut, too, because Cayman Rucker comes flying in. It's kind of slicing underneath his original path. It's a good job of bouncing it, and then good strength on the finish by Mims to take e BJ, or excuse me, Giovanni Biggers into the end zone. Yep. So Mims, the touchdown run. You see the total yardage. And the differential now and the time of possession by the way is almost 18 minutes now in favor hey, look, of the Wolfpack. Man that's been a thing. Yep. You know for Carolina is the time of possession. And I think a lot of coaches look at that as a number that is a key factor in games against the Tar Heels. Brennan Armstrong has now 12 games of 300 yards or more passing. And in Coming into the ball game tonight, he had thrown for five. I think you and Dave O'Brien did the Carolina Virginia game when he threw for 554 in Chapel Hill. Yeah, he went back off. in 2021. And Will Hardy will ask for a fair catch. Carolina will scrimmage from its 25. Don't forget championship weekend starts next Friday here on ACC Network, live from Uptown Charlotte. ACC Huddle starts our coverage at 3 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, Mark Packer, Taylor Tannenbaum, and a cast of thousands. Tim, you going to join in the pack and Taylor? Why not, right? They're inviting thousands. Yeah. And then coverage at 6 with the Huddle. Command Center has coverage on the network during the championship game on ABC and then post game with Kelsey and the gang from Bank of America Stadium. And looking forward to a fantastic environment next Saturday night in Charlotte. Off the 25 May launches, and that's caught. Grabbed by Bryson Nesbitt out near midfield for Carolina on the first play. And Nesbitt's been quiet for them. I mean, everyone kind of offensively has been quiet for them, but Nesbitt's a guy that they really treat him as a slot receiver. You need to get him the football. And Hampton, who's had a hard night at the office, just took a massive shot. Well, Marion Hampton got to midfield and not much more. Well, and Jalen Scott playing oh. downhill. One of the biggest hits of the night. Yep. May pumped it. Now trying to get through. Oh my goodness, he scooped it out to Hampton, who will get the first down, I believe, to the Wolfpack 42. Caden Fordham was there for NC State. And we've seen Drake do that a few times where we've seen a chest pass, we've seen left-handed passes, able to get that one out. May on first down. Going to shoot it down the field and incomplete. Looking for J.J. Jones at the 10. Let's go back to the little shovel pass for Amari and Hampton as Jones is slow to his feet. And I wasn't sure that Drake wasn't down. He slips again. 
does get that football out, but man, the footing has been an issue seemingly all night for the Tar Heels. J.J. Jones is over to the Tar Heel bench area. British Brooks has come in for Carolina. Blitz coming from the pack. May will just heave it toward the near side. Walker the closest Tar Heel. Aiden White was there defending. And it looked like Sean Brown was peeling in with Peyton Wilson. And all of a sudden third in the full ten for Carolina off the Wolfpack 42 and. That's not a good sign for Carolina because J.J. Jones has been one of the more productive offensive players tonight. Yep been their best receiver for sure. Tim two down territory in the mid third here. Well, and and third and ten state bringing the house again may shoots it middle of the field that's caught. Right along the uh, hash mark at the near side Bryson Nesbitt flags that down. And is he going to have the first or not? Here? I'm, not I'm not sure he's going to have the first, but he's under pressure. And obviously, Peyton Wilson puts a good lick on him. They give him the first down. Good throw under pressure by May, but making it tough sledding for sure. May shoots it over the top of Gavin Blackwell, who's on the field. Blackwell did not play last week at Clemson. You've got to go back to Minnesota to find the last catch. For the Tar Heels number two and that's the freshman Doc Chapman on the field wearing zero so now Walker's had a tough night Jones is shaking up no Nate McCollum tonight Tim and Nesbitt's not on the field right now it's it's like it's Copenhaver yep with British Brooks in the backfield a little shovel pass to Brooks trying to ride some blockers inside the 25 Brooks down near the 20 it'll be another Carolina first down. Jalen Scott's tackle stops the play. And that's a good changeup. You know, part of the thing is you get into these situations where it's just drop back, drop back, drop back. Getting it in the screen game can help keep your quarterback from being under too much pressure. Copenhaver couldn't come up with a diving throw in the end zone. So that's why I said Nesbitt not being in, in the, the lineup right now. Leading him a little bit inside. It would have been a great catch, but those are some of the plays that Nesbitt typically makes. Copenhagen, of course, had two touchdown catches on opening night in Charlotte. Has added one more to his quiver. Has one tonight for his fourth of the year. Second and ten. May. Here's Walker at the 10, the 5, and Tez Walker. Did he break the line for the touchdown? Sean Brown the hit. And no signal yet. Now a touchdown's been awarded to the Tar Heels and Tez Walker. Well, it's great effort by Tez Walker. Good job of finding him underneath by Drake May. All kinds of room to run afterwards. And then there was a big collision there by Brown. And I think that was Peyton Wilson. Ball came out. But then it's recovered, I think, in the end zone by Tez, unless that knee was down before the ball came out. Walker did recover the loose change. I think maybe on that initial hit, Walker's knee was down, which just looks like that's what they're ruling. So it is first and goal. Here's May under duress, breaks away from one, pursuit now throws and incomplete. Copenhaver was the intended receiver. Jalen Scott was in the backfield. And Carolina will miss on the two point play. So it was a touchdown for Tez Walker. And then Carolina went for two. So that's what happened. So the Walker touchdown. Is a 10 play 75 yard drive in 210. And with 544 to go in the third, it remains a 19 point game on Drake May's third touchdown, responsible for tonight on the pass to Walker. And let's go back to the Walker catch. Yeah, I'm somewhat confused by this. Brown hits him here. I think Tez, his knee is down, 
and then he gets hit by Peyton Wilson, and that then that ball comes out. Right. So I think he was actually down before the fumble. Correct. There's the hit. And let's see if this ball is loose. His knee is down before that ball is loose. Here's the onside kick, and the Wolfpack going to come up with it. It's Anthony Smith who scoops up Liam Boyd's onside try at the Carolina 44. And now Carolina has the ball, or NC State has the ball at Carolina's 44-yard line with 5.43 to go in the third. And here is Brennan Armstrong, who's having a whale of a night. He's got 326 yards and three touchdowns on 20 of 28. Raphael and Poole in the backfield, and this is Kendrick Raphael, who picks up about four on first down. So Tez Walker gets the Carolina touchdown, and in the process, his seventh touchdown catch of the year. And which is the Tar Heel lead. Kind of a unique sequence there. I, I thought he was down. Thought the officials ruled that he was down. Didn't know that that was a two-point play, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, no question. And I'm shocked that it wasn't stopped and looked at. And Here is Armstrong. Throw here to the near side. And that's Coit making the grab. Now, that's a big sequence right here. Third and one. But Carolina needs to find ways to come up with stops. Clearly, they have not done that all night. And here comes the big package for NC State with Isaiah Shirley coming onto the field and an extra tight end, Reed Mitchell. Now, this Isaiah Shirley is from Boone, North Carolina, at six foot three, 275 pounds. The same in motion. Here goes Armstrong, ride behind Isaiah Shirley, and I don't think he got it. Cedric Gray and Stick Lane made the stop for the Tar Heels. And Armstrong took a big hit. Wow, look at the and side. Just going basically, you know, quarterback power. He tries to bounce it a little bit. Good pursuit, and then just kind of driven to the ground is obviously his head. Picks up a little turf as well. Yep. So fourth and short. State will work from the shotgun. They're eight of 13 on fourth down this year. Mims is with Armstrong, and now we got procedure on the Wolfpack. Perhaps Carolina thinks so. False start. Offense number 52. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Timothy McKay, the right guard, with just a bit of a flinch. Just watch him here after they come in motion. That flinch right there, and now it certainly takes you out of going for it. It's a pretty good break for Carolina. And for the first time tonight, we see Caden Nooncaster to punt. And Will Hardy without Elijah Huzzy in the lineup. Signals for the fair catch and will make it at the nine. So, 3.28 to play in the third. And Carolina trailing by a 39 to 20 score. And while we change possession, how about tonight's Gatorade fueling performance? I got an idea, how about KC Concepcion? Well, he's fueled the offense for sure. They started off early getting him the football and Done it a bunch of ways, playing in the slot, running an inside slant, running him out into the flat from motion, they handed him the ball in the backfield. And I think some people say, well, why don't you double him? It's hard to double him when you don't know where he's going to line up. Here's May off the nine, shooting for Walker. Or Jones, beg your pardon, and the hit made by Battle on J.J. Jones, who's still down. So Carolina starting off its nine. 
And J.J. Jones shaken up. And he takes a pretty good shot by Battle right in the back. Jones, who was a little shaken up on the previous drive, which is why we were seeing some of the reserve receivers. It's like maybe that left arm. Yep. And Tyler, what'd you get? Well, J.J. Jones heading straight back to the tent now. That left arm hanging, and he's obviously in pain. He was in there for the entire NC State offensive drive before that. Came out just before the heels took the field. Tried to give it a go again, but after that hit, looks like he's going to be evaluated once again, guys. Okay. It's been a gutty performance by J.J. Jones tonight. And now Carolina with first and 10, and it's 20. Here's May shooting for Copenhagen the catch out of bounds at the Tar Heel 45. And part of what's happened because in, because Carolina has created some first downs they've been able to get tempo and I think that's helped them protect Drake May a little bit better. Yep. The run game though Tim has gone nowhere tonight. They've got 128 rushing yards. Most of it belongs to May. A pump and go and thrown away from Blackwell. Only guy in the neighborhood for Drake May. Who's now 50% on 24 tries, 173 and two scores. NC State not only has been electric on offense tonight, they delivered the goods defensively too. For sure. And Peyton Wilson been one of those guys. Yep, here's a shovel pass trying to get Hampton. Going and he'll pick up a couple. Now it's third and maybe seven. Davin Van, the stop for the Wolfpack. And I think now at this point, especially when you're around midfield, you know, I think you just got to get some of it back, go for it on fourth down. Here's May. He will hold and now throw to Copenhaver and a first down at the Wolfpack 40. And Davin Van is going to be down behind the play. The big number one of the Wolfpack shaking up. Their leader in sacks and hurries. Shaking up on the play here as Carolina's moved it to just inside NC State's 40 with two minutes to go in the third. Yeah, and it was and it was pressure from Van. I think that initially made Drake May climb in the pocket and thought he might take off and run, but was able to find Copenhaver. And you know, Devin Van has been See him. He, here's Van right here. He's been a really good player here at NC State. Goes with that rip move and you know, kind of his climb in the pocket. I think helped. And yeah, they're going to get him to his feet. Isaiah Moore, of course. Was the leader of the Wolfpack defense a year ago, war number one, Davin Van. You get number one here, you're a captain, you're considered one of those guys. And he's been that this year for Dave Doran and Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator. He really has. And then kind of thrown across his body is May. <laughs> and I almost wonder if that was being looked at, that hit from Isaiah, excuse me, Peyton Wilson, right after the catch from Copenhagen. First and 10. They fake the reverse, and British Brooks goes nowhere. Going to lose six on the play. Five for sure. We'll see where they spot it. Carolina going to hurry up, though, and get ready for second and long here. And that was going to be a flea flicker, and I just think they didn't feel good about the exchange because they had receivers down the field running routes. Yep. May climbs again. Kind of knocked away as he threw toward Gavin Blackwell. It was Red Hibbler. Who leads the Wolfpack with Van in sacks, closing on Drake May. And by closing on him, I think he put enough pressure on him that he affected the throw from May. Watch as May climbs, trying to get this off. He's right. I, I don't yeah. know that May really was able to throw the ball that he wanted to because of the pressure from Hitler. Hitler's only had a couple tackles in the last four games, but he's around the quarterback a lot for this state defense.
May on a straight drop. Walker on a cut. Flags everywhere as Tez Walker is brought down at the 26 by Boykin. And there's going to be offensive pass interference on a pick by Nesbitt to get Tez Walker free on the under route. Pass interference, offense number 18, 15 yard penalty. It's third down. So here, this little pick here to get Tez coming underneath, it just ends up being of too obvious you know you can't lean into him and I don't think he really needed to do it since he was going underneath Nesbitt and now I mean what are we at third and 30 yeah but really what you need to do is, is just try to get a chunk of it back to at least give yourself something to think about on fourth down NC State's got three guys 20 yards or more off the line of scrimmage you know, slip it to Brooks, try to ride his blockers across midfield. And there's Wilson out of the air to take him down at the Wolfpack 49. And look at the ground that Peyton Wilson covers. My goodness. He is so fast. He just plays with so much speed. At six foot four, just covers so much ground. You think you've got a good pickup, and then boom, here comes number 11 flying from the middle of the field. You know, we were told earlier in the year about the 10,000 yards he would cover in a game. I believe it when you're watching. I think the most, I mean, the, how hard he plays is amazing, but the fact that he plays that hard, having been what he's been through injury wise, yeah. is even more incredible. So now, with 13 seconds to go, a punt that's fair caught by Coyd inside the 15 at the 13. Look at it like this. Tonight's his 36th start. He's probably going to have 400 career tackles tonight. And the thing that he has beyond the stats is the respect, not just of his football program, but of his coaches. Dave Doran says he commands over our roster. Usually you have a guy who's an alpha on defense and one on offense, right, Tim? Yeah. Rarely do you have a guy that touches everybody. This guy does. Armstrong in the pack from the 13. And Casey Concepcion taken down, maybe for a loss here. And that will get us to the end of the third. NC State trying to beat Carolina for the third straight time tonight, leads by 19. ACC Network primetime on a Saturday night. We're in the state capital of North Carolina, and NC State is trying to beat North Carolina for the third time in a row and for the sixth time in the last eight meetings. And we go to the final 15 minutes tonight at Carter Finley Stadium, and the rookie sensation KC Concepcion and Brennan Armstrong have helped stake the Wolfpack to a 19 point lead. And Kendrick Raphael hurdles a guy, and he'll be about four or five yards short of the first down. And third down will be the next snap for the Wolfpack. Stick Lane made the tackle for Carolina, and it is a three-touchdown difference for Mac Brown's Tar Heels. And NC State will huddle and burn clock accordingly, Tim. I think. Armstrong brings Raphael into the backfield. There's Gray, the linebacker. There's Concepcion in motion. And they'll loop it incomplete. Kendrick Raphael dropped it. Stick Lane was right there. And NC State's going to go three and out. Second time in as many possessions for Dave Doran's team. Well, and because of where this happens, just a drop. It's good play design. They get Raphael open. He makes that catch. He's probably going to get the first down before Stick Lane's going to be able to get him to the ground. And now should be decent field position for Carolina. Will Hardy, who's been fair catching most of the punts here tonight. And the punt from Mooncaster is a short one. 
It will check up around the 45 and bounce around at the 42, and that's where Carolina will get started. A minute old in the fourth quarter, Taylor. Wes, you mentioned that NC State three touchdown lead. Well, if you thought that would chill out the very intense Wolfpack defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, uh, you thought wrong. I just heard him in the huddle a few minutes ago to his defense. He said, quote, no time to play timid. Be aggressive. I'm going to keep pressuring. Don't be scared. In true Tony Gibson fashion. Oh, my goodness. He's done a great job with this defense. Oh. I think the guys love playing for him. He does. He'd stay aggressive, and I don't think that that's going to stop now. He brings the corner on this one. Here's May hit as he throws, and it's caught at the 43-yard line. That's Bryson Nesbitt. Boy, Drake May got blasted when he cut it loose well, by Shaheen Battle. Well, Tony Gibson wasn't lying. They bring the corner from the bottom of the spring. Oops. Screen who drills Drake in the back and then Nesbitt just works the in cut. May the pump wanted to come back here. Now we'll throw toward Hampton incomplete. Let's go back to the play before the incomplete ball to Hampton here. What I mean, they, they end up disguising this well and they bring Battle, who is probably fortunate that they don't flag him for hitting with the crown of his helmet. So the ball at the 43. Here's Brooks in the backfield with May. And British will make the catch. And then guess who? 11 was there, and so was Devon Betty for the Wolfpack. Wilson and Betty. Peyton Wilson now with 11 tackles. 23rd game with double figures in that department in his incredible Wolfpack career. Third and seven. May thought about it, tucks and runs. First down to the state 32. Drake May's well over 100 yards of rushing. And yeah, I mean, throw that one on the Yeah, he has run the ball well. This is a design quarterback draw. He just gives a little pump fake to it and then follows Ed Montalis for the first down. Throw Copenhagen the catch and another Carolina first down. Yeah, to I the think, 19. And we've seen NC State play soft a few times. That's why they went with the quarterback draw and then playing so far off of Copenhaver that you know, Drake was just able to spit the ball out to him. Wolfpack runs some fresh men on the field. Carolina's got Nesbitt, Jones, and Copenhaver to the left. Walker to the right, the throw for Tez Walker. Intercepted, Peyton Wilson. Tez Walker's running a slant and kind of oozes inside to it. See how he just kind of stops, not allows Aiden White to close on it, gets his hand in there. And not all that different than some plays we've seen earlier this year because of hustle to the football. Peyton Wilson's there to collect the tip. Second turnover of the night for Carolina. Peyton Wilson had a pick six against Clemson. And now has his sixth career interception in what is his final home game. This is Concepcion off the first down snap at the 16 tackled by stick lane. Hard night for Tez Walker. Yeah, it really has been and you know, he's been the explosive big play guy and they just Really haven't been able to connect tonight. You got to give credit to NC State defensively for their plan. Boy, Concepcion looks. Yeah, he's going to deserve a cold tub. Maybe two, right? A cold tub on a cold night. Mims in the backfield. That's Rooks in motion. And double Mims will fall across the 20 toward the 23. I believe three for a first down. And 
four minutes gone here in the fourth. And Concepcion is back out on the field. Youngster out of Charlotte. Dave Dorn said you cannot qualify his impact on this team. Here's Armstrong and caught and a flag down on the ball for Bradley Rosner. That would be a first down if the play stands at the 28 yard line. I think we're going to get pass interference basically setting a pick pass interference offense number four. It'll do us half of this is the goal third down. Porter Rooks. Rooks is, is trying to basically set a screen for Concepcion and really didn't need to do it. It's not where the ball went. Right. So the ball will go back to the 12. And it is third and 15. 14 roughly. Here's Mims. And that goes nowhere. Tamari Fox wrapped him up. NC State's going to punt the ball here. Even in a three possession game, you're getting the football back inside nine and a half minutes. You probably now are looking at. Your, these are your final three possessions. Yep. NC State, by my count, Tim, that is three straight three and outs for the Wolfpack. Hardy stands at the 48 to wait on Nunkester's punt. It's a good one. Hardy will signal for and make the fair catch, backing up around the Carolina 40. 19 point lead for the Wolfpack. Nine to play in Raleigh. Hey, don't forget next week, College Hoops and the ACC SEC Challenge. Both the men and women take part. Wednesday, we got a women's doubleheader. Starts at 5 o'clock in Atlanta, Florida, and Georgia Tech. Then Vanderbilt visits Westmore and number 10 NC State. All for you on ACC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. So Carolina trailing 19 with 9.06 to play. Starts from its 39. And May being pressured, sacked by Wilson. The ball came out, and it looked like Lampkin fell on it, but a marker down on the play, and Drake May shaking up. We're going to have an illegal shift on offense. And Dre might, Drake might be injured. Yep. Illegal shift. Offense, two players moving and never be set prior to the snap. Penalty is declined. It's second down. Back to Raleigh in a moment. Timeout for an injury to him. Well, NC State by 19. Drake May shaken up on the play. Looked like an ankle injury. Another look here, Tim. Well, it was Copenhaver trying to block Peyton Wilson, which on a pass rush it's probably not what you want. I think the ball is down and I, I just think it on you know, that ankle as Peyton Wilson was coming in from behind him. I would be shocked if Drake May doesn't bring himself back out onto the field. Yep. Redshirt freshman Connor Harrell from Alabaster Alabama is going to check in fifth time Harrell's played this year. Terrific high school prospect. Two time state champion at Thompson High School. 39 touchdowns and 70% completion as a senior. And Hampton straight ahead got two, two and a half before he took a big lick from Peyton Wilson. And on the, the night he plays his final home game, Wilson is going to empty the tank. You can count on that. Well, and Tony Gibson emptying it as well brought all out pressure. On that second and long, and 
You'd actually expect him to play coverage here on third and long. Snap to Harrell and sacked he is. That is Red Hibbler. Hibbler just uses a speed rush. Spencer Rollins, the right side of your screen, he's just coming up the field and he's able to get the edge quickly. Rollin, who just has a hard time getting out of his stance and no shot for Harrell. So now fourth and plenty. And McGinnis will punt. Coit at the 30. And he'll be tackled back at the 27, and a flag will be thrown. And Carolina got a face mask. Based on the way that play kind of unfolded at the point of the tackle. Busy night for Adam Savoie and his crew. The long snapper Drew Little might have been involved here. Let's see. During the return, personal foul, face mask, number zero of the kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down, timeout. It was Drew Little who grabbed the face mask. Timeout in Raleigh. Carolina trails 19 to the Wolfpack. Welcome back to Raleigh. Just before we went to break there, quarterback Drake May went into the injury tent over here on the UNC sideline. You saw him over there working with Heels head athletic trainer Luke Ross. They went in there together and just a few moments ago, Drake came back out with that left ankle all the way taped up. Looks like he may give it a go here to end the game, which could be his final game in a UNC uniform, guys. Wolfpack takes over. At their 42, Mims joins Armstrong in the backfield. Been a terrific night for Brennan Armstrong. Casey Concepcion's first night in the State Carolina game's been phenomenal. Atkinson the stop on Mims after a pickup of three. I think it's been a great, great job of Robert and I calling oh, yeah. this football game and we'll continue to build on some of the creative stuff they've done throughout the year, getting Concepcion the football. But also getting other guys involved. And I think helping Brennan Armstrong be a little bit more productive in the passing game, spreading the football around. Yep. Concepcion drifting into the backfield. Armstrong will hand to Mims. And Tamari Fox and Javari Ritzy lock him down, but not before he reaches the 48. Well, and all of a sudden, out of the frame, Mims came out of there. Dylan McMahon, the center, <laughs> trying to get Delbert out of there, and everything seems to be okay and square now. The winner of this game, Tim, when we started the night, was going to have a chance to win 10 in the regular season because they're going to, neither team obviously going to Charlotte next week. They're both going to have postseason games. And for NC State, they're trying to win 10 for the first time since 2002. When that Wolfpack team actually won more than 10. There's Armstrong, and this is Lassane, and he'll get the first down of the Carolina 46. Well drawn, Cayman Rucker made the stop with Stick Lane. Well drawn is right because, you know, they motion Concepcion out of the backfield and then he ends up being the lead blocker as they get Lassane the football on a little wide receiver screen. Yep, ball at the 46. Five and a half to go. And NC State on the verge now of their third straight win against Carolina. The last two had been in dramatic fashion. This one tonight was emphatic. When the Wolfpack scored on their first eight possessions of the ball game, they scored on all six in the first half, the first two in the second half. And that's what I mean about the plan. You know, when you're that successful offensively, it means the plan coming into the game was a good plan, and then the players were able to execute the plan yep. at a high level. And this was an offense 
We had him against Duke. Yeah. He scored three points, and it was the very beginning of the game. I think the way this team has stuck together has been really impressive. Here's Armstrong. Mims going to the left. And he'll break the 45 to the 43. It'll be third down from there. Tackle made Bo Atkinson out front for Carolina. Well, and Dave Dorn is also going to win Tim against Carolina for the seventh time in 11 tries. Well, and I was about to say, when you think of the job that Dave Dorn has done, Ooh. talk about that winning rivalry games. They mean a lot. But for a team that, you know, had to make a quarterback change and then make another quarterback change, the two running backs leave the program. The way that it's been held together has been impressive. Yep. Third down. Armstrong wants to throw and he'll be sacked. Almost went down under the pressure of Amari Gaynor who got him first and then by the time he staggered Armstrong help arrived from his mates. Armstrong was thinking he was going to get a big play because Carolina wasn't lined up correctly defensively but by being out of position it took away the throwing lane. Yep. Timeout 342 to go. NC State in front by 19 in Raleigh. Well, don't forget, coming up after the ball game, ACC huddle after dark. Here from Raleigh, Kelsey with Coach Rick, Eddie Royal, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel. Full analysis, highlights, interviews, and more from a busy, busy final Saturday of the regular season in the Atlantic Coast Conference right here on ACC Network and always available on the ESPN app. Noonkester will send it toward Hardy who asked for and makes the fair catch. Carolina is going to scrimmage from its 13 and time for our Bojangles big bow moment. And in his final home game at Carter Finley in his 34th season as the voice of the Wolfpack, ladies and gentlemen, Gary Hahn. And they fake the Mims. Armstrong the middle part. Touchdown, Wolfpack. KC Concepcion in the middle of the end zone. And they're coming on a full blitz. Armstrong throwing the fade. Left corner end zone. It is caught by Collins. He hung on. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Congratulations to Gary Hahn, who, Tim, 34 years ago, was hired here to replace the legendary Wally Osley as the voice of the Wolfpack. And Wally Osley was the voice of generations of Wolfpack fans. And in 34 years, Gary Hahn has done a first class, first rate job for the Wolfpack fans. And at 72, he said, I've got some few other things I want to do, and I've had my time. And he's just a first class guy and a wonderful gentleman. We wish him all the best. And Congratulations on having a night here for your final football game at Carter Finley with a terrific night for NC State. Yeah, absolutely. What a game. Yeah, it's a call for these Wolfpack fans. Oh my gosh. And he and the great Johnny Evans with Tony Haynes, and they got a terrific statistician who's done it for years, Howard Baum. It's just a solid, solid broadcast. And congratulations to Gary. Here is British Brooks. Carolina with a second down play will pick up a first down with 228 to play and down 19 now British Brooks who had a heck of a night here two years ago and a before the theatrics of a Mecca a Mezzi late won it for the Wolfpack and now May underneath again to Brooks and Peyton Wilson makes the tackle at the 45 Wilson who had a career high 16 tackles against Miami. He has eight games with 10 or more this season. He had 16 against Miami this year and there is Nesbitt and almost or was intercepted. The deflection comes away and Devin Boykin has got his fourth career interception and his third of the year. It's another tip ball that ends up in the hands for Wolfpack defender and Dave Dorn with some hugs to some players and yep. to Tony Gibson for the job that they've done defensively tonight. 
And Drake May is going to have a three turnover night, a fumble and two interceptions. And this one kind of high and behind Nesbitt. Probably should make the play, but tips and overthrows in the middle of the field. How about this? Typically turn into interceptions. Bishop Fitzgerald or Devin Boykin. One of them had it, and it was Boykin. And the Wolfpack are going to go to nine and three. Winners of five straight and six of seven to close the season. With a postseason date and a win that would get them to 10 for the first time in 21 years. And now they've got 100 seconds to burn to that ninth win. And how about Brennan Armstrong tonight, Tim? I mean, you know, and Dave Dorn told us. Yeah, he said to Brennan, he said, I don't know how this is going to go after he benched him. I don't know how this is going to go, but I love being around you. And I think, you know, making Brennan feel like he was still a part of the program, that he was still appreciated, I think means a lot in terms of when you get your opportunity again to come back and play well, which he certainly has done. And here is Mims breaking free and can't keep his feet. He'll fall shy of the 45 yard line. And that should do it. Yep. Carolina now has lost four of their last six. And they've been held without 20 points in consecutive games, Tim, for the first time since 2018. Been a span of 70 games since the Tar Heel team has failed to score 20 or more. In consecutive games. And Carolina will have a postseason date somewhere. And here is Armstrong to touch a knee. And NC State has now won three straight and six of the last eight from North Carolina. What a night! For Kevin Concepcion, Brennan Armstrong, and Dave Doran. And NC State. Because Tim at three and two, this could have gone either way after five weeks. They had no offense. They were relying on their defense. The offense has come around and the defense has continued to carry the team. And how about Mac Brown showing some respect to Peyton Wilson, who's just been outstanding this year. Taylor, take it away with Dave Doran. Coach, we're standing here. You got a big smile. You're looking up at these fireworks. What's the smile about? Oh, there's nothing better than beating those baby blue boys over there like that. Proud of our guys. Turn the red light on, Chancellor Woodson. We're going to have some damn fun tonight in Rollywood, I'll tell you that. How did your guys get this done tonight? Uh, it's just heart, love. Like I told you, it's about family. These seniors, they played for these 13 guys. Our staff coached for these 13 guys. These fans cheered for these. Thank you to the Wolfpack Nation for that. That was a big time night by them. Speaking of your seniors, one I know you love very much is Peyton Wilson. Oh, yeah. 15 tackles, interception, sack, forced fumble. I know his career is coming to a close, but what can you say about 11? If he doesn't win every award that he's on, it's the crime of the century. There is no better football player than that man, number 11. He is a bad man and a great human being. I love him to death. Peyton, yeah, baby. <laughs> Come on in here, Peyton. Come on in here. Should be up for the damn Heisman, too. <laughs> hey, Peyton, your coach has a lot of good things to say about you. What can you say about this man standing next to you in this program you've been a part of for six years? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it just kind of shows his resilience, the culture he's built. You know, first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, giving us the trials and tribulations that we've had this season. And just to come on the brighter side, I mean, that's his plan, just to become stronger individuals. I mean, Coach Doran, Coach Gibson, all these guys are still into us every day. So just this, this is all culture right here. Third hey, straight year. If you want to, if you want to have culture, come to Raleigh. The boys and blues don't know about it. Hey, there's a message right there. Hey, beating those guys, like Coach said, in baby blue. What does that mean? I mean, me being 15 minutes from them. I mean, it means a lot to me. But I'm happy for these fans. For us, it's just another tail whoop, and we get to get somebody right down the road. What are you doing tonight to celebrate? That, that's between me and my friends. <laughs> Congratulations, Peyton. Thank y'all. Well.
We don't know how some of the uh, postseason awards are going to come out, but Tim, Peyton Wilson is the playmaker of the game, presented by Honey Baked Ham. Final night on the turf at Carter Finley Stadium 15 tackles, two for loss, a sack, an interception, a forced fumble. Pretty good night at the office. It's an incredible night, incredible player. Came into tonight with Probably the favorite for offensive player of the year in the conference and Drake May defensive player of the year. Yep. Probably favorite and Peyton Wilson and Peyton Wilson seemed to get the better of the night. You know what NC State. Uh, goes to nine and three an amazing performance down the stretch by this Wolfpack team 39 to 20 the final great to be with Tim Hasselbeck Taylor Tannenbaum our wonderful crew Alex Parmartino Bob Frateroli and the terrific men and women involved. Good night from Raleigh where the Wolfpack goes to nine and three with a 19 point win over the Tar Heels. Here's Kelsey. Wes, thanks so much. We are hanging with you here at Carter Finley Stadium as the Wolfpack are still on the field celebrating this win. Another rivalry win for Peyton Wilson and the NC State crew over North Carolina. 39 to 20 the final. And how about what we've seen from Peyton Wilson? in his career, his fifth season here, and he has done so much for this team. Kelsey, Eddie, EJ, Eric, and Coach hanging out with you now. And guys, this is a special moment, Eddie, for Peyton Wilson as he takes this in one last time. I mean, everything that he's been through here uh, at NC State, the ups and downs, the highs and lows, through all the injuries and setbacks, it's great to see him playing at the top of his game at the end of his career here. And what a great moment. I don't know if I, if I was him, if I'd be giving him cleats away. Some some lucky fan got some, a, a, a piece of memorabilia that they'll remember forever. Peyton might come looking for that one day. It's pretty special, man. And to, to go out the way that he did, 15 tackles, a fumble, an interception, TFLs, whatever you want, man. This dude is one of the best defensive players in the entire country. If there's a linebacker award, I don't know how his name already is an edge onto it. Uh, th this guy's a freak of nature, man. It's so fun to get to watch him these past four or five years. Yeah, truly seeing a living legend here in Raleigh, man. I mean, the way that he's affected this community. Talk about him giving, you know, favor and love to Jesus Christ. I mean, just what you want from a student athlete and what a great way for him to finish his career here at home, not only with a great stat game, but also a great victory over the rival in North Carolina. Showed up as a 17-year-old boy, he said, and left a 23-year-old man. Yeah. And you can see it in him for sure. But uh, I think the bottom line in this game, though, is <laughs> NC State was just a, a tougher football team than North Carolina tonight anyway. And when North Carolina needed to run the football, they couldn't because they got behind early and uh, just couldn't stick to the game plan. Well, look at the turnaround we saw from this NC State team. Things got really hard for them in the middle of the season. And then Coach Doran has said multiple times to us or in press conferences and privately to his team that they came out with a goal of finishing this season 5-0 and in the regular season after those losses. And they just rattled off their fifth straight win third straight over North Carolina. EMAC, a lot of things had to come together to make that happen. Quarterback changes in the middle of it, and they're still able to come that adversity, too. No, there's no question about it. And here's the deal. At the end of the day, Coach Dave Doran can coach his tail off. I mean, this dude can motivate get guys going in the believing uh to just an unbelievable football coach and he's one of the best models of consistency in the acc i mean you look at his record you look what he's been able to do uh in, in this season alone where i personally i don't know about y'all I, I had them gone like nc state was done uh you know when, when you saw them lose the games that they did weren't really playing with any explosive nature at all. Uh, you make a quarterback change, there's a little juice. You win a couple games and he decides to make a business decision to do what's best for him and N.J. Morris. And Brennan could have quit. Brennan could have absolutely as a transfer. He's been here a couple months. He doesn't owe these people anything, but he didn't. Uh, he stayed true to, to this game and the game will always take care of you. And uh, man, it was amazing to see what this Wolfpack team is accomplishing. And uh, you know, they have a chance to, to do some historic things. They've only won double-digit wins or had double-digit wins once ever in the history of North Carolina State football, and now they will have a chance to do that in the postseason, EJ. Yeah, Brennan Armstrong, the way that he 
finish this season, I think it's so impressive as well to get benched and then to come back and play and not have a bad attitude, not be a bad teammate, to be a mature veteran, somebody who's played a lot of college football, to basically have a perfect game tonight. Well over 300 yards passing, no interceptions, a clean night, three touchdown passes, awesome stuff. And you're seeing a lot of the scenes from inside the stadium. Let me take you to the concourse right now where the Wolfpack <laughs> fans are pretty pumped up to celebrate this win over their rivals, 39-20. to 20, Another nine-win season for this team. And Peyton Wilson heading oh. into the locker room, hopefully headed out to this set in just a little while. Can't wait to hear what he has to say and what his head coach Dave Doran has to say about what they were able to do. And the job's not done yet. They're going to get to play in a bowl game as well. Mentioned that nine-win season. Going to have an opportunity, Mac, as you mentioned, for a double-digit 10-win season and cannot wait to see what lies ahead for them. But we're excited about the day that we have had here at Raleigh all day long and excited about what is still to come. Mentioned we've got coach coming in just a little while, but right now we say hello from inside Carter Finley Stadium. We got some friends, and we've got too. some friends that have been go, wanting baby. to yeah, say yeah. hello. Patiently waiting. You see them trying to climb up and say <laughs> hello because they've been back there celebrating this win as well. Our Hall of Famer coach Mark Rick, EJ Manuel, Eric McLean, Eddie Royal, Kelsey Riggs hanging out with you. And guys, we're going to get the opportunity to talk to some of these guys. But coach, if you're Dave Doran, you finish the season with five straight wins. You seen, send your seniors off tonight with a win over your rivals. How good does it feel to be walking back in that locker room and celebrating it with your guys? It feels awesome. I mean, you love those guys. You go through tough times. People down you. And uh, he had actually uh, got a little bit fired up when he got disrespected on national TV and <laughs> stuck up for his boys, I stuck up for his team. Yeah. Those yeah. guys, that, that to me might have been the turning part of the season. Because <laughs> right. those, those guys responded to Coach getting mad at somebody saying something bad about him. Yeah, I, you know, I can say something bad about him. Don't say anything <laughs> bad about my boys. That's right. And, uh, I think that really fired those kids up. Absolutely, and this team embodies what Coach Doran is, which is tough mindset, working hard, all those types of things. But, I mean, they eat, sleep, and they breathe it, man. Every time you come here, you hear the fan base, they go hard. The players, I feel like, feed off this fan base. And then when you mix that with a solid quarterback like they had tonight and Brennan Armstrong, man, they're going to get a lot of wins. And truthfully, they play like a top 25 team supposed to play at right. home. You're supposed to blow out North Carolina. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. And I think that's they the are. important part, Top man. 25 you, you, for a reason. You see right. that number by their name. I mean, that, that's earned. That's something that means a lot to these fans, to those players, to this staff. And they played like that absolutely tonight. I mean, I, I didn't think they'd get out to the jump that they did. I mean, you're talking about it being 33 to seven at one point. I didn't right. see that. I mean, I thought that yeah. NC State would win handily and play really well on defense, but man, a total effort hey, get from coach. these guys. And Coach Gordon got the ring, baby. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do none of them new dances, Coach. Keep it old school. Keep it old school. No, but look, I give Robert and I a lot of credit as well because this wasn't one of those offenses that, that has a ton of playmakers He's been able to scheme things well for Casey Concepcion. They're using him like Percy Harvin. I, I saw Florida playing early against Florida State, and it clicked kind of like, man, this is their version of Percy Harvin. So it's working out for them. He's got Brennan playing better, a lot better, taking care of the football. But that also comes from him sitting down, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with him. That's his UVA guy. So he knows how to speak to him, knows how to bring him back home. And he did that. We're going to get to hear what Coach Dave Doran thinks about this win. I'm sure that cigar will probably be making its way out here with him as well in just a little while. Meanwhile, been a fun one here at NC State, and it's not done yet. The Wolfpack fans still hanging out. They know something's coming. Their coach going to be here in just a little while after he finishes celebrating with his team. And I mentioned celebrating with his team. That locker room is the place to be tonight. The Wolfpack So Kentucky comes in to Louisville and takes another one, 38 to 31. The crowd there here he is. is chanting, we want Doran. Yeah, we do. Let's give the people what they want. Coach Dave Doran, hello, hello. Hey, coach, He's coming through. 
What you got in there, baby? What's in the bottle? <laughs> Enoch, we got to get this between you. Let me get up out of there. You can come right here. Just don't burn your leg. You slide over for your coat. These fans been waiting on you. <laughs> Move my blanket. <laughs> you got it? The cigar is boss, man. That smells good. Can you hear us, Coach? I got you. All right, we can hear you, too, and I know you hear this crowd. Chan, your name. You heard him all night, Coach. Another nine-win season for you guys yeah. and a win over your rivals. What's this feel like to take it all in? Well, first of all, thank you to all the fans. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Wolfpack Nation, thank you so much. That was a special night. And I uh, couldn't be more proud of our staff and our football team for what's happened here in the last five weeks, especially exclamation point tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coach, you talk about your staff. Robert and I, Tony Gibson did a heck of a job game planning tonight. Tell me how it all came about. Because Robert and I wasn't a it, – it, it, the hire – it kind of shocked me a little bit, but it's worked out great. I mean, he's used KC the right way, Brennan and, and MJ. He's done a great job with both of those guys. Well, you clearly haven't had to coach defense against Robert and I. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is very, very hard to defend. And, uh, I was looking for somebody that could be unique in our in our offense here. Love that. Just like our defense is unique. You know, you play us, it's a hard prep. We do some different things here on both sides of the ball now, and the kids are buying into all the different weird – we just call it pre-snap chaos, man, and I love, love chaos. It. So. We're having fun with it. Really proud of Coach Gibson and Coach and I, and our special teams coordinator, Todd Goble. Those three guys are incredible leaders in our program. Coach, you just kicked their ass. Thank you. Before, early in the week, you said, you know, this will this will change the standings. This will change our bowl prep. All I want to do is beat UNC. Yeah. Why is this game so important to you? You know, when I first got to the school, my opening press conference as I was leaving, people were shaking my hand, doing that thing. And, Half the room just said, Coach, just beat UNC. It's like, really? And as time went on, I got a feel for why. And there's just a difference in the fan bases, and I'm not going to get ugly, but our fan base is my kind of people. Let's just put it that way, and I'm out here to defend them and fight for them, and that's what this is all about. This is a game between two schools that don't like each other, and I get the opportunity to lead the charge, and I'm all about leading. Yeah. Speaking of that defended him, that comment that was made on a major network, the uh, game day comment that was made that kind of pissed you off. Yeah. Uh, I know you're defending your team, defending your program. And I think you guys responded to that. I think, I think they did. Yeah. Well, look, that's my job. In, in this school, 11 years here, if you look at the stats, we've won a lot of football games here. We're second in the ACC in wins over my tenure of 11 years. We're in some pretty good company if you look at the four teams that have won eight or more, now nine or more in the last right. four years. This is a great football program, and it's a great school with a lot of good sports. I'm pulling for all of them right now. Yeah, so thank you, Steve Smith, for putting that little thing out there. I love Steve, man. We made up. We're all good, but that was a, that was a great instigation for me. And sometimes, as you know, Mark, sometimes you got to fight for your That's club right. publicly, man. Right. Well, Coach, Casey Concepcion's had a great season. He capped it off with another great performance tonight against his UNC defense. What makes him different than any other receiver in the conference? You know, the, just the multitude of things he can do, you know. The fact that he can play tailback, wide receiver, he can throw the football. He's in there in the Wildcat. He's got incredible eye-hand coordination, and he's tough, man. He is really tough. He was banged up tonight, as you guys saw him and Brennan were Warriors tonight. Coach Peyton Wilson did two or three victory laps, signing oh, yeah. everything yeah. he could, high-fiving, taking pictures. I mean, this dude had 15 tackles. Two tackles for loss, a couple of sacks, a fumble, knocked the quarterback out for a couple of plays. I mean, he, he is the epitome of what you have created at NC State. I've asked you this before, but what does he mean to this program? Well, first of all, if he doesn't win all three of these national awards, what are people looking at? I mean, there's no better defensive player in college football. What he does on the football field and what he does in that locker room, and what he does on campus in the community, what he stands for as a human being, he is a 10 plus. And I love that kid to death, man. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Well, he followed your lead when it comes to defending teammates yeah. when he was telling everybody to take it easy on the quarterback. Yeah. And uh, I was really proud to see that. And he sounded, he, he was so funny. He said, I showed up as a 17 year old boy. And I'm leaving a 23-year-old man. Grown ass man. That's your grown ass. That's exactly right. But he attributed a lot of it to you, Coach. Yeah, well, it means a lot, you know. I mean, all these guys, for me, it's like surrogate sons, you know. And some of them go way deeper because of the pain he went through as a player. And I was right there with him. So to see his success, what a great story. The same thing with Brennan Armstrong. You know, the yeah. fact that he came here and went through what he did. Now he's 
taking us to the promised land like he is, man. I'm so proud of him, too. Coach, I know you want your guys to graduate, but what are you trying to instill in them as men before they leave you? Yeah, I just want to see them become the best versions of themselves, you know. I want to see them grow in every facet of life and be ready for life after football. We talk about chasing two dreams in NC State, life with football and life after football. And I want them to have everything they want in life. And so my job is to hold them accountable and push them to those, those great heights that they can reach. Coach, I, I know you got another one with this team because you guys are going to have a bowl game. But when you think about this program right now, this group of players, I know every year is different, every team is different. How how do you summarize what this group means to you? Yeah, I don't know that I can. You know, I think uh, it's going to take a little time to put it into words. Very special, uh, resilient, tough, gritty. I love them to death, man. They play so hard and, and they're great around the building every day. Like, man, I, I'm so lucky to come to work with kids like this and coaches like this. If you're a recruit out there and you watch this game, you know where you want to go to school. I mean, this place has got going on right now in a lot of ways. When I'll you, say this too, Coach. They're lucky to have you, man. I am. You're the model of consistency in this conference. There's a couple of coaches, but what you're able to bring here and what yeah. you've been able to do is amazing. I'm glad right. we've been a small part to see that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And I'm sure you didn't get to hear it, but Peyton was already telling people, hey, if you, you just saw what we're able to do, this is the place that you want to be. This is the place you want to play. Real quick, before we let you go, we had some some video of you dancing in the locker room, <laughs> showing off your, <laughs> your moves. No, I thought good. you were pretty good. good. I just good. wanted to get Here's your thoughts thing. on it. Do we have some video of him in, in the locker room? Hey, hey. There you go. Uh, look, look. Little Jimmy. Right? Good. What that, do you call that, Coach? That's a shuffle, baby. That's a shuffle. That's about to be the parking lot, Jimmy, yeah. that we see when you're out there with the red yeah. solo cup. Yeah, that's a double D slide right there. The double D slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coach Gorin. Congratulations. Can't wait to see you guys in one more game this season. And as always, we appreciate the time. Always good to be here Thank at Carter Finley. So Go Pack. Appreciate you, Coach. Congratulations, Coach. All right. We'll have more from Raleigh after this. What y'all think about your coach? Let's go. We are also excited to see what Peyton Wilson can do at the next level. He has been a mainstay on this team for such a long time, his fifth season here. And he took a couple of laps around the field to make sure to soak it all in and pay it off with the fans. You can probably on, see Pay. he's running without his shoes. He signed his cleats, gave them away. Going to take a, a something from the crowd there and give his signature, give that autograph all out as well, because this was quite the night for Peyton Wilson and the Wolfpack as they take care of business against their rivals. What does it sound like in the locker room with Dave Doran when you get a win like this? Let's take a listen. Hey, you know, it's been 1,460 days since mm -hmm. those pieces of mm -hmm. beat them. Yeah. Say though, right there. Grown <laughs> 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 ass man. You guys played your ass off tonight, man. Everything we asked you to do the last five weeks, thank you. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> you are the hottest team in the freaking country right now, man. You just played yourself into a damn good bowl game, by the way, too. But isn't it great making the world a better place? <laughs> Listen, you guys, hey, tonight, have fun. Be careful. All right, you got tomorrow off. You guys know that. All right, we'll see you guys on Monday. Your family, take care of each other like one tonight. <laughs> My game ball. This was a coaching deal right here at, at the half with just a couple seconds to go, 10 seconds to go, no timeouts. They run their field goal team on. Perfect execution. Get the ball snapped with just enough time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just a wow. perfect, job. perfect execution. Unbelievable execution. And oh. they, got 12, they got 12 men on the field. What? Forget that. Forget that. Game ball, the game ball really goes to Valare. Whoa, Valare. Throw it a touch.
touchdown pass. <laughs> Who's catching there? the touchdown it's pass? This is unbelievable. <laughs> this guy's going to win the Heisman. Yes. He's got two more years of eligibility <laughs> in Syracuse. Take it over for the great. Schrader. What is <laughs> happening? Well, what is happening is this freshman Casey Concepcion yep. is on fire, career high, My 131 God. receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. It's his fifth multi-receiving touchdown game of the season, second most by an ACC player over the last 20 seasons. Yeah. Shout out to NC State. That's got State. Got State. Got Nobody can take this ball from me. You carry like a local brand, man. Right. That's a problem. Exactly. Huh? Like the quarterback for BC holds it like that. <laughs> he does run around that? playing backyard football. Um, we didn't get to see him play today. But let's talk about what we did get to see and what we're still going to get to see because we got 11 teams yeah. that are still yeah. playing told you, from the ACC. I told you, Pat. Yep. Said 11 teams. 11 teams BC going bowling. bowling. Guys, Good we job. started this season off with five straight games of ACC football, and the conference fared really well in that. Yeah. EMAC try to sum up what we've seen so far, and it's not over yet. Yeah, it really. It's just set us up way back in September for some impactful November football. The ACC really took advantage of that. You love to see it. Got another chance in bowl season. But next week, we get to settle all Wait. the scores. Knowles, finish the cards. It. We get to see what's happening. We'll see. It's going to be a big game. Who's going to win? Can Florida State go to the CFP? That's the big question. Please make it to the CFP. <laughs> <laughs> I like here. the pins on it. If Jared like Burst play like that, that, they will win. <laughs> All right, we'll get to see that next week in Charlotte. Cannot wait. Our coverage actually starts on Friday, and ACC PM will, of course, be with you. All throughout the week, getting you ready. ACC SEC Basketball Championship coming your way this week as he well. Cannot wait. Thanks he for everybody that. here in Raleigh and back in Bristol. We'll Smidium. see you in Charlotte. Smidium.